Hello everyone and welcome to In Conversation With. I'm your host, Singer Malt, and you're listening to the Dofus Podcast, a show with the best and brightest Dofus players and content creators out there, whatever they may do. Today, we're joined by Jay on, on Shadow. Did I say that correctly, Jay? <laughs> Yeah, Shadow, that's how it's Sh pronounced. Shadow, yes. How are you doing, man? I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. How are you? Pleasure, pleasure. I'm adequately nervous. I'm, I've said that to you earlier. Before every single one of these episodes with anyone, I'm always nervous, but I hope we'll get through it together. That is awesome. I've said it a handful of times already. I'm excited to get to know you in a setting that does not cause you distraction while you're doing some sort of quest. And as we will get to know in a bit, you play a server with some special rules that require very minimal distraction, isn't that right? I would say it's best to be focused as much as possible on Shadow, for sure. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Shall we do this? Shall we get started then? I'm ready. Dive All right. right in. Okay, so... Uh, while preparing for uh, this section, I have thought, let's go back to the original format and I've brought back the old three anecdotes that tie me to the country where you are. These are personal stories of mine that tie me to the guest of every single episode. And I found it really difficult because of the sheer amount of memories there are with the US. So, first one. One of my core memories to do with gaming has to do with the US. That's incredible. Uncle of mine returns from studying in California. He says you're studying. I'm not entirely sure if you go to California that you are studying. <laughs> he left his laptop with me for a while. And I remember finding a stash of Xbox video ads. You know, the old ones. American music like Akon and notes of his stock investments. Suffice to say, that very experience informed many of my future decisions, namely deciding to learn English, playing video games on the regular, and keeping in touch with American financial markets through work and privately. That was the first one. Second one is when I was much older, doing a lot of Googling, finding interesting facts and conversation and things like that, I realized the two countries, Morocco and the US, have a special special relationship to say the least. The first country to recognize the US as an independent state was Morocco. The oldest friendship treaty the US has is also with Morocco. So I hope this speaks to the relationship we are forming through this conversation right here today, Jay. Third and last one, and I've said that it was incredibly difficult to narrow them to three. A friend of mine who went to study and live in the US found it really hard to return and leave the country despite wanting to because of one of the most peculiar reasons. It doesn't make sense to me. Perhaps you can elucidate this mystery to me. His answer is always, I can never get separated from my guns now that I have them. <laughs> How does all sound like to you, Jay? Well, the gun thing is a little bit familiar. I'm not sure if you're aware, but I'm from Texas, specifically in the United Ooh. States. Uh, one of the biggest states, of course, one of the southern ones. Uh, just out of curiosity, do you have any sort of personal anecdote about Texas specifically? Mm. Just some tidbits of general knowledge, like uh, one of the largest states, if not the biggest state. Um, I think I just said that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. No, I'm not, not nothing specific, really. But yeah. So what what is the deal with guns? Is it how do I explain that my friend who never saw a gun by close or far all of a sudden cannot get separated from them? Does that ring a bell with you at all? I would say culturally that's a pretty common thing. I'm not personally a big gun guy. Hmm? I have shot guns before. I was a boy scout for some time. We went to a summer camp and got some rifles there. It's it can be a fun hobby, uh, and I think as long as it remains that way, there's no harm in it. Fab, fab. I mean, that gets me a bit closer to it when you say it's a cultural phenomenon. Therefore, it's deeply rooted in that society. And as long as you participate in it at large, then you catch the bug, I suppose. Fab, thank you ever so much for that. In typical fashion, I think I've given away too much already. And we've got our guest talking. Right. Jay, welcome to the podcast. The floor is yours. Hey. First things first, would you like to tell us about yourself? I'm seeing in the chat people asking, is he the guy who does this? Is he the person who does that? Would you like to present yourself in as much detail as you fancy? Everything that you'd like to tell us about today we're taking. All right, I appreciate it. I will keep it a little bit more generic so that we have something to talk about going forward. But my <laughs> name is, well, my internet handle, I suppose, is Jay. 
I am a content creator, by which I mean I stream Dofus every so often, uh, on schedule or off schedule, and I play on the Shadow server, which is the epic slash permadeath server, where mm -hmm. Death Against Monsters is permanent. I also, my only real contribution to the scene is that I edit the Dofus wiki occasionally, one of the least uh, popular and most out-of-date information sources that remain, but it is one that I'm trying to bring up to date as much as I can, not always meeting that goal. But I think that's pretty much it about me. The two big things are going to be the shadow and the wiki. If there's anything else you wanted me to mention, I can go ahead and talk about that, but I feel like that hits the high points. Fabulous. I feel like you are really prepared. This is going to be a blast. Uh, one thing I'd like I'd like to point out to chat is one of the well when you find out that someone streams you go and scout and see what the vibe is like but there's almost always something that keeps you going back and for me there's two things I've mentioned them in the ad post one of them was the encyclopedic knowledge of the game which we will get to know by speaking with them and also the wicked sense of humor as I like to call it it's very straightforward and I love it and you can see that on my face right now as I speak so thank you very much for that answer Jay um signature question of the podcast first things first I log into your account right now don't panic I don't have the ability to but let's say I do and I double click the recall portion on your main account where is it taking me and why that zap in particular so you're going to end up at Frigost 3, Count Herborg's Zap, right in front of his Ooh. castle. And the reason for that is because the last time that I really played on Talkasha, Frigost 3 had just come out. And so wow. not a lot of, well, I would say everybody had access to it by that point, but not a lot of people went there. Mm -hmm. And so that is the one that I went to with uh, some of my friends there. A little bit of a flex, right? It was the latest content released so far. And also <laughs> just, that's where, that's what there was to do, right? So that's where people were congregated. Mm. No, and so as I think other people have mentioned on this question, these days I <laughs> rarely use recall potions except inside a dungeon because of the convenience of the Haven Bag Zap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's very true, actually. I, I'll still pull up my hand and say I'm one of those classic people who still use a recall potion and have not yet adapted maybe, maybe to this. Maybe if you saw the thing. price on Shadow, you would uh, <laughs> change your habits. <laughs> How much are they? Oh, they're not actually that expensive. They're maybe 800 a pop. All right, all right. That, that is still about six to seven times higher than Talcash and Ordinary Servers. Fabulous. Oof. Mind blown. We got more than we bargained with for that answer, for that question. And I feel like this is why I ask it, because you almost certainly learn one or two things about the person from the way they designed their choices. So we know when the last time you played on the server, the reasons behind that and things like that. Thank you very much for that round answer. Now you know I'm stingy as well, so that'll definitely come into play later. <laughs> I wouldn't use that exact word, but yes, if you fancy it. I did mention the uh, the US earlier. Um, and I wanted to tie this to the question of... Um, I'm always surprised when anybody outside of France or Morocco does play Dofus. And we did mention that you're from the US. And that gets me curious about what is your story with the game? How did you find out about it? Perhaps we will know a bit more about you and how you got to find out about the game. So that's a little bit of an interesting story, at least to me, because mm -hmm. I was there for it. Uh, not a lot of people have heard of the US, but that is indeed where I live. America, the Etats-Unis. Um, and so you're correct that there is not a lot of people who know about Dofus in the country that I live in. Yeah. And I found out about it because, if you don't mind, I'll do a little bit of backstory. Sure, you know, that's, that's exactly what I'm asking for here. Go ahead. But this is not Dofus related, but it will tie in a little bit later. I grew up, I'm in my 30s. I'm a little bit older maybe than most of the people who are around here, but probably not by much. And so when I grew up, we had dial-up internet, 56K, so yes. that whenever you connected, it would make those really loud sounds, <laughs> if you're familiar with that. Yes. Um, also, there was only one line of internet. So if you, I was online, nobody else could be online at the same time. And me and my sister, we both played Neopets. That's a browser game where you have these little pets. I think most people are at least passingly familiar with it. Yeah. And it was always a struggle because we couldn't both play at the same time. If I was playing Neopets, she was just sitting in a room doing whatever girls do. I've never found out. But <laughs> Eventually, when I was, I want to say, 15 or 16, we got, uh, what is it called? Um, it's not dial-up. It's cable internet or something like that. I think it was Roadrunner is the company. Uh -huh. ESL. Uh, not that one, <laughs> actually. But it uh -huh. was something like that. And it, th there were two big things. One is that multiple people could be connected at the same time, which was huge. And two was wireless internet. Before that, it was all wired. And so broadband. Yes, thank you very much, Gluto. 
<laughs> Along with that, I also, around the same time, got my first laptop, which was pretty cool. <laughs> if you only use desktop computers, the ability to bring a computer with you anywhere, that was really big. Now I sound super old. But laptops, obviously, <laughs> is much more flexible. I could bring it anywhere. In my room, people, nobody was watching me. We didn't have to use the family computer to play Neopets anymore. My sister came in one day, and she said, hey, I, I got a Mac. She also got a laptop. It was a Mac. I see the Groogler jumping around everywhere. That's super distracting. Yes. <laughs> Let me, sorry. Let me get off the sorry, sorry, I'm trying to yes. get in the control. Yeah, I got it to work again. Sorry about that little distraction. <laughs> <laughs> so she had also gotten a laptop. It was an Apple, a Mac, and there was some sort of Apple game arcade, something like that, where it showed you a bunch of games you could try out. One of them was called Dofus. And so my sister and I played Dofus together for a little bit, and I didn't like it very much, and we stopped playing it. Uh, she stopped playing entirely. I came back to it a couple of days later because I had enjoyed some of it. I enjoyed the aesthetics and it was my first MMO, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's not one of the traditional 3D ones. So I did go back and I started enjoying it and played a little bit more. And well, I think you know where it goes from there. I never really stopped. Uh, well, that's not true. Like every big player, probably I've spent years off and on just playing mm -hmm. and then not playing again. Uh, but I do have a lot of fondness for the early, the early days, even if I have no desire go back one of the one of the memories i have most uh up front is when i was just getting started i had some bread i think you used to get bread for free and i was in a fight and i was low on hp and i tried to use the bread and i couldn't <laughs> i was like wow well, this game is terrible you can't even use the hp bread because obviously you can't yeah. use consumables uh, when you're in a fight something i was not aware of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's one of my earliest memories in dofus and that is the history <laughs> of how i got it just a random fluke my sister opening the apple arcade yeah, yeah, that is awesome. So your earliest memory of the game is that of frustration of not being able to use bread. <laughs> yeah, I think that frustration has really been a constant, maybe throughout the entirety of Dofus. I think everybody would agree. <laughs> Just quickly to answer Gluta's question, yes, I have managed to sync up the audio coming from Jay's feed uh, and linked it to the Groogler, his avatar, so it moves whenever he speaks and mimics the high pitch. If he goes high, we'll jump higher and things like that. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> is uh, my, my first step to becoming a VTuber. <laughs> Not much of one with the current little level of animation. That is awesome. I Baby couldn't help. Steps. The second thing I wanted to pick you up on is in that story, uh, with um, the internet, the frustration of learning a new game, laptop, the transition and all of that. I was trying to picture all of this and something came to mind. You very often use words or expressions, uh, let's say idioms, French ones, in an accent that leaves me befuddled. Did all of that that you've said, is it possible that all of it happened in France and that's why you know of the game? Uh, no, that was, I have, so as you mentioned, I have some French history. I guess I can talk about that a little bit. If you want me mm -hmm. to fully segue into the next portion. Mm -hmm. So my parents are French. We speak French at home. My, my, my mom was born in France and my dad was born in French Algeria. So actually Ooh. pretty close to Morocco, I believe. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we're neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, although I'm not sure. I mean, okay, I won't get into uh, history and politics and things like no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but my parents are French. My first language is actually French. English is my second language. So whenever I mess up, I have the excuse of this isn't technically my first language. <laughs> I always like to have a cop out like that. <laughs> yes, I have. I uh, moved to the United States when I was three or four, I would say, and have not really gone back since then. So everything that I remember, in effect, starting from my earliest childhood is going to be in English, at least you know, in public at the beginning. We would still speak French at home. Uh, with my siblings, since I was, I want to say, six or eight, something like that, I've always spoken English with them. It seems weird to speak in French to them, but I speak in French to my parents because, same thing, it would seem weird to speak yeah. to them in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. See, my radar picked that one up, and I was right. The French connection is there. Do we attribute Dofus itself to France, or was it a complete stroke of luck just finding it on that computer game? Did it facilitate you playing it, the fact that it was in French? So I started late enough that the game was fully translated into English. Ah. I, I don't know that I knew it was French for at least a while. Okay, okay, okay. It's possible that my sister noticed it was French, and she, mm. that's why she mentioned it. So lost sort of to, to the annals of history. 
But over the years, certainly the fact that I do speak French a little well, poorly, uh, but I understand French fluently has uh, been a big asset to me for sure. I would say. Fabulous! It can only help in um, in this current game, at least. Yeah. Um, I suppose you started playing the game and everything, and then at some point in recent history or recent times, you have decided to go live for the first time, and I'm always baffled by the background history, the very few moments, weeks that precede someone deciding to take the leap and do something they've never done before, create content, go live, put a portion of who they are out there and expose themselves to people's liking them and disliking them criticism. So what can you tell us about that period? What led up to you deciding, I'd like to do this publicly now? Well, I might talk about this a little bit later, but I've always been interested in other people's content creation, if you want mm. to call it that, on Dofus. I've always read extensively and watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I've always secretly thought that I would be pretty good at doing that myself. Mm -hmm. I've never made any steps to, you know, towards it. But in the, at the beginning of this year, one of my New Year's resolutions, as corny as that sounds, was to start streaming. And so that is what I did in January. I began streaming for the first time. I was finally starting to do things on Shadow that I thought might be a little bit impressive, like the Crimson. Well, Crimson is not impressive. Uh, but the Turquoise Dofus, I think, is not something you'll see a lot of people stream on mm. Shadow. And so I thought, you know, might as well get myself out there, see if anyone uh, shows up to pat me on the back for being a cool guy who does really tough stuff on Shadow. But I did want to just go ahead and start doing it and see how it went. And it went okay, I would say. The big problem with streaming on Shadow is, as you mentioned earlier, it's a server that requires a lot of concentration. So yes. it's a fine balance between paying attention to what you're doing on the stream and paying attention to what you're doing in the game. Yes. One thing that helps, <laughs> of course, is if you don't have a lot of people showing up and so there's less things to pay attention to in the chat, mm -hmm. which was certainly the case for me at the beginning and even now. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why, is that I made a New Year's resolution and I wanted to see if there were other people who would be interested in Shadow gameplay. So I actually yeah. started in January. Um, and then I stopped for a while, for a reason we may get into a little bit later. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I started it up again. I want to say whatever the month is that comes before May. I don't like being put on the spot for that sort of general trivia question. I believe it's April. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got a little bit more into it when I came back <laughs> from the event we might discuss later. And mm. I've been streaming fairly regularly since then. Mm. Got a nice little community of people who show up and watch the Shadow stuff. Some Shadow players, some none. I always appreciate seeing them, having them in the chat, and... Please don't tell us any more about Shadow, because it's the first big topic I want to pick your mind on, because it, as far as I'm concerned, I, before I saw your lives, I did not know anything about Shadow, and I realized from speaking to people within the community on the Discord and things like that, it's most people share my current level of knowledge, which is close to zero, so we want to pick you up on that, but just before that, I want... Just while staying on the topic of streaming, first of all, it's not corny to have uh, uh, New Year's Eve or New Year, um, what do you call them, uh, <laughs> resolutions, because I say that because I myself had exactly the same one on the 31st of December and I decided to stream for a year and do it properly, which later on morphed into full time doing this after just six months of it. So I do appreciate that. It makes sense. It's not corny at all. But the other thing is the goals that you've set yourself, what you imagined it would be for the first time. Did you, how did that change after you got started? Are you still on track? Do you still enjoy it? What is your vision, global vision on that? So the joke that I like to use is that I started streaming. My goal was to become famous enough that if I died on Shadow because of a bug, Ankama would have to give me back my stuff and my characters <laughs> because otherwise there would be a massive public outcry. Yep, um, fair clearly enough. that is not realistic. I would say at least for an English content creator and especially uh -huh. not for a me English mm. content creator. My new goal, I would say, is just to do what I can to... It's tricky because it's easy to say evangelize the Shadow server, but it's not really what I'm interested in. I don't, I'm not going to go ahead and create a guild and start recruiting people and make offers of gear to start out and things like that. I, would, I wouldn't mind doing that, but it's not... It's not really the kind of person I am to uh, mm -hmm. manage a guild and create a community, that sort of thing. I couldn't do what you do, for instance. So mm -hmm. I don't really know. Just kind of share what I'm doing to people who have an, a passing interest in the server, at least, and show them if they're interested. Some of the things you have to do on Shadow that are different from a classic server, because 
m many people can guess some of the things you'd have to change in your play style, but there are a lot of peculiarities that might not come to mind as the first thing. So that's something I'm interested in is letting people giving that sort of information to people. Terrific. That is absolutely spectacular. Right, I want to segue into the big topic, which is shadow. What is it? What does it do? How do we find out more about it? And in order to do that, I've thought of a certain number of numbers, redundancy. Um, and you, I'll tell you the numbers and you tell me what am I talking about. So, the first number is 40, 38, 23, 32 and 16. What comes to mind when you hear these numbers? Uh, it comes to mind, maybe somebody read my Twitter. Yes. Can you tell us publicly what, what am I talking about? <laughs> yeah, so like, finally a chance to use my degree. Um, so that, I believe that is the number of the, of the variety of Dofus. Of course, the plural of Dofus is Dofus, which yes. uh, not everybody agrees on, but is something I try to keep to. That is the number of the primordial Dofus that I have quested on Shadow, yes. which I recently added to my Twitter. Uh, because I didn't have anything up there and I was <laughs> desperately looking for anything to put on there so you weren't just uh, searching in vain for content. Right. To put it in perspective for everyone, Jay has done 40 Volbises. 38. What is it? 38. Can you tell us? Just in case I, oh, I found him. He's done 40 Volbises. Right. So that's 4 0. Um, in the ochre department, it's 16. You're lagging a lot behind there. <laughs> Emeralds, 32. You can say that's easy. But then Crimson, a big step up in difficulty with the golem, se secular golem, or whatever it's called, that quest fight, 38. Turk, with all the idols, with all the quest fights, 23. Holy smokes. Can you tell us more about Shadow to begin with and the difficulties of this game mode at all? I would love to. And let me make one extremely big correction there. Apologies, yeah. I was unclear earlier. I have done 40 <laughs> Volbuses on Talkasha. <laughs> Ooh. Technically on Echo at the time. Uh, I was. I have never done it on Shadow. Okay, um, zero. Okay, 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 okay. Multi-trillionaire. I... <laughs> More commas than the game can afford to give you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fortunately the limit is gone. No longer a 32-bit limit, but I don't yeah. believe there are buyers for that many Volbuses on the server so yes that's why i haven't done it of course i could but <laughs> nobody would buy them yeah but yeah so that the 40 uh Volbus is on echo that's what I, I did that to make money some time ago we can talk about it if you want it's not particularly interesting i was really again scraping the bottom of the barrel of things to mention but yes so the big thing about shadow is that if you lose a fight against a group of monsters or any single monster you die. Your character is erased. You turn into a gravestone. If you want to play that character again, you have to reset it from scratch. And you spawn an Incarnum. You have zero items on you. Everything is erased from your inventory. You have no quest or achievement progress. You start from zero again. Except you do keep a couple of things. You keep the big ones are your saved zaps. Although uh -huh. you can't access the ones that require quests or levels like Frigost, Wabbit Island, whatever, until you meet those conditions uh -huh, uh -huh. and you also you keep your marriage partner which can be helpful to teleport around but other than that all of your equipment that's the big one and your levels and achievement and quest progress is wiped when you die and that includes quest fights and incarnation fights there is one exception to that it is the 84th alignment quest Lang's Arachne if you can die on that one allegedly I have not uh -huh. done it myself yet and you're you don't team, you don't wipe you uh just not sure what happens. I assume you get teleported somewhere else, or maybe you just spawn again in the same room. Mm -hmm. That is the one fight in the game that you can lose with no consequences. <laughs> of course, <laughs> TP, uh, Prisms, AVA, Col Colosseum, you can do as much as you want okay. uh, of, of that without having to worry. But PVM, including quest fights, very fatal. Wow. So that is the big thing of Shadow. As a counterbalance, at least these days, this was not present in the original server opening, but these days you have triple experience for both your character and your professions as well as triple drops that is Ooh. one of the things that i think attracts a lot of people is the rapid progression from times three experience all the, all the drops you can get it makes up for the loss of idols essentially you're always playing with idols okay drops so people mm -hmm. are interested in that for farming teams and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and of course since you can die and lose all the equipment you had on you 
that engenders a lot of resource destruction of items and that you had equipped and resources you had in your inventory. So that makes the economy maybe a little bit healthier, at least in theory, because people are always buying things to replace equipments that they lost. Yeah. So another thing that attracts people. So does your uh, bank kind of get wiped if you die? I'm sorry. What was it Does going? your bank get wiped as well if you die in the character? I guess. Uh, so anything that is not specific to your character is saved. So your haven bag, chest contents, your bank, your paddocks, everything like that are safe. Mm. You do not lose those when you die. It's only your character specific in uh, inventory. And your, and, and your mount you have equipped and its inventory as well. That is incredible. That's the big difference. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the natural question to ask you is. You've mentioned Takash and 40 Vorbises, which tells me pretty much you have been very endgame to be able to do uh, Krokosko area, um, farm Paragon, level 200 dungeons. What what attracted you to a game mode where you can just lose everything that you have? Well, I do have an answer for this. I was playing on, it was Echo at the time, it was before the Talkasha merger. Yeah. I believe Pandala, the new Pandala had just come out. It was Pandala 3 at that time. There hadn't mm -hmm. been 4 or even 5 like there is now. Pandala 3 had come out and I had recently been getting back into the game because I'd stopped around when the Abyssal Quests came out and then a couple years later I came back. I did Ivory and Ebony and 6 out of 6 and then took another break and I came back for Pandala. I did Pandala 1 and 2 and I was doing 3. Mm -hmm. Stop repeating myself so much. I apologize. <laughs> I was doing 3. I beat Queen in Amikuram, uh -huh. that's how I want to say that. I'm sure that's not correct. Oh. And I was fighting King Imagami, and I spent about a week in that dungeon. It is pretty tricky, 8 loot. That was before the nerfs, and a lot of dungeons are harder 8 loot than they are 4 loot. I yeah. think almost all of them. Yeah. And it was, it was rough, right? They have so much HP. My gear was not where it needed to be. My team composition on Talkasha is atrocious. I run an Ekaflip and an Osa. And no, I don't have an MP Ooh. reduction in you. I don't have a lock tank panda. I don't have a Sedita or anything like that. <laughs> I play classic Elio damage team, which is pretty good for most dungeons, but I was getting I was getting wrecked in Imagami. And so mm. after a week of that, I just I was sick of it, right? I was like, if this is gonna be this is the first dungeon that I have to do, and then there's gonna be a bunch of other ones. I think Pandala 4 had actually come out and people were saying it was even harder. Yeah. So I kind of lost motivation to complete the game, which was my original goal. I wanted to 100% the game on all eight of my characters. I even bought a bunch of Rhine Needles. I was going to start breeding them to get full achievements. Wow. Uh, but I, it was, I didn't have it, right? Didn't have it in me to do that content. And so I went back to Shadow <laughs> at that point. Because mm -hmm. I had, I guess, I don't, I don't remember exactly why I started in the first place. I think I just saw somebody mention it and thought that could be interesting. And then I team wiped and didn't go back for several years until that point where I was uh, sick of the game <laughs> and wanted wow. to do something a little bit different. If you can't handle the end game content, just yeah. go back, make a, a team starting from scratch, right? And do the early game content again. Yeah. yeah. It's always been my motto. And you do have, uh, you benefit from um, the bonus when you die. So you get to catch up rather quickly and you know your way around it. And there's also a thrill with every fight where you have to focus properly before you go into anything theory, craft, and whatever. Yeah, that sounds awesome and, and, and rather intense. Yeah, uh, just... one thing I didn't mention in terms of experience is, I think you just said it, is if you die, you have double experience on top of the times three, so times six experience until you reach the level you were at before, the highest level you've reached up until that point. And then you go back to just time three. Yep. So that does make it reasonably painless to level characters back up to where they were before after losing them, although obviously the gear... Yeah. It's a whole uh, other bag of worms, if you will. Yeah, I have seen many of your inventory swaps where you actually in the bank keep everything for all levels because at any moment you could need them. <laughs> so usually what I will do is when I have low level characters, I craft gear for them. I really never sell gear. because yeah. You never know when you'll have to start over again at low levels. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that is an interesting uh, yes, way of approaching the game. It's incredible, isn't it? Unorthodox to say the least. I just wanted to confirm to uh, Durstia that you do, in fact, have to start from zero if you die in any dungeon room or boss or quest fight. So any PVM fight, except the one exception I mentioned, uh, does wipe your character, every character who is in that fight. Um, you can, if you lose a character in the fight, you're okay, as long as your team wins. It's not Sword, on, sword Art Online rules. Um, but if you team wipe, then every character in that fight is dead. 
There you go, Dersha. That sounds intense. And it's exactly the game mode that Jay plays on the regular. Um, I'm just, I've just had a passing, fleeting thought. Uh, of the many times I have uh, watched your uh, streams, uh, you very occasionally still go to Talkash in order to practice the quest fights before they happen and get reacquainted with the mechanics of them. But every now and then, you do open your Haven bag or bank or whatever it is. And I've seen... Honestly, the biggest collection of Jahash sh since my inventory. What is that all about? <laughs> oh boy. Um, so I mentioned some time ago <laughs> during this interview that I did 40 Volbuses at one point and yeah. then I sold them for commas yeah. and I used that comma, those commas to buy a subscription for my characters. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, it took me about a year to do the Volbuses because I procrastinated for so long. There's a lot of things that are kind of boring. And sadly, that means that they became unlinked one or two weeks after they merged all the servers. They enabled transfers to and from different communities, mm. which dropped the price of the Volbis from around 55 to around 40. Oh. So I lost a lot of potential money from that. Mm. But yes, I did sell them. I made one and a half billion commas somewhere around there, and I invested those into subscription is the big one. And yeah. also I wanted to gear my characters. This was before I had switched to Shadow. One of the things I purchased was legendaries that I thought might be useful, including five Jahash cloaks which uh, is ranks among my worst investments ever, <laughs> given the recent changes in 2.72. Yes. Five of those bad boys back when they had a lot of value. How much do you, can you yep. can you remind us of the price of them back in the day, if you still do remember? Yeah, I actually have all the screenshots. Um, it was between <laughs> 90 and 120 million commas per, per Jahash. That is very decent, actually. I thought, I've assumed the worst. I thought it would be 200. <laughs> Yeah, nice. no, I was uh, fortunate that I didn't buy them uh, earlier, so I guess I can't complain too much. And it's not my worst investment ever. It's only it's 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 in the top five, however. Mm. Well, that that clears it. My my hidden suspicion was the number of times you've done Volbis and that you had to go into the Well of Dreams made it so that you've had the most spectacular opening that you could tell us about in Vlar Minds. But yeah, that answers oh, it. I would love. I would love for that to be the case, but for <laughs> Volbis, I did the easiest floors. I restarted whenever I was stuck. I did, I think, three complete runs, and I got one legend, uh, the Bram World Beards crown over that, whatever yeah. that is. It's yeah, worth yeah. maybe less than a million commas. Nobody plays it. So every, everything else is bought, sadly. Yeah, nice. You have a question from chat. So if you're running a fight and you lagged out, is it pretty much GG? It can be. Uh, I don't know if you have my Twitter open, but you can see a couple of instances where that has happened to me. So one of the things, the first time this happened to me, uh, I mean, the answer there is yes. If you lose internet and you die in a fight because of that, you're dead. Uh, it is as if you had died normally. There's nothing oh. you can do about it. One of the greatest fears of every <laughs> Shadow player. <laughs> Jesus uh, I've Christ. been fortunate that it hasn't happened to me yet. I have almost <laughs> had that happen to me. I did lose internet uh, when I was in one of the rooms of Wa Wobot, luckily a very low level dungeon. Mm -hmm. So I got an email a couple hours later from my internet provider. There'd been an outage and it was two hours long. So I would probably have died. I think that level could probably kill you in two hours. Fortunately, I was able to hotspot with my phone. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> my apartment has absolutely atrocious reception. I get one bar at the best of times. So I was standing there next to my window <laughs> trying to push the phone against it, uh, pushing it out the window and jumping up and down to try to get reception at all. And I finally managed to log in one character and finish the fight. And that was one of the most stressful times that I've had on Shadow so far. So I really hope nice. that does not happen again because I don't, th if it were in a high level dungeon room, I would not have any sort of fallback plan, unfortunately. Uh, that is hilarious. Just imagining you jumping around, holding the phone with one hand, trying to find cellular connection and then play with the other. <laughs> Just... <laughs> it's, it's pretty rough to know that that sort of thing can happen with no, you know, you don't make any mistakes. Yeah. It's just that your internet dies or lags or something. It's one of the worst parts of the server, for yeah. sure, I would say. And sadly, it's... there's no, I don't, mm. I don't know what they could do about that. I don't really think they could do anything about it. Yeah, I must agree with that. I don't think they could uh, do anything about that. Uh, just because you've mentioned WoW Robot and having done Volbis and then restarting on Shadow and doing pretty much most of the game's content, uh, can you give us a rough idea about when you started the game and what sorts of uh, limits have you reached? Like, have you done Eternal Conflict? Have you done Dreams all the way through? What? Just a general idea about when you started and where you got in terms of doing the game generally. 
Okay, you mean back on Tolkasha? Or slash Just Echo your, slash your game Solar? experience as a whole. I'm, the reason I'm asking is I'm trying to peruse. Where does your encyclopedic knowledge come from? We've gotten a hint <laughs> about the, the wiki. Having to teach others about something means you have to search for it properly. But your experience in the game, what does it look like generally? Uh, so from starting from the beginning, I played one character at the start, like I believe all of us do. Mm -hmm. I was played a SRAM slash SRAM. I mean, how do you pronounce it? Just out of curiosity. SRAM, because in English, it, it's one of those words that doesn't mean anything because it's machs. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't exist. Okay, so yeah, I played a SRAM at first, did not enjoy it, and I switched pretty quickly to a YAP, which I leveled in accordance with a guide I found on the wiki, mm -hmm. sort of tease the uh, future questions. Yeah. <laughs> and over the course of time, I added new characters. I added an NU first for more drops, added an any for all the benefits that that gives, and then yes. Panda, Osa, Sakrier, Kra, and Fekka, finally. Or maybe it was something else. It's been a while. But I was up to eight characters by the time Frigos 2 came out. And I wanted to be a big uh, multi-accounter doing all the Frigos 2 content and stuff like that. I never quite mm -hmm. made it. I was always playing a little bit behind. Never got to the, the highest peaks. But by the time Frigos 3 came out, because there was a gap of a good number of years between uh -huh. Frigos 2 and Frigos 3, yeah. that, give, that did give me enough time to catch up. And I was pretty well geared for that. It was, of course, a seismic shift. If you were around for that, the, the uh, limitation of weapons, that was the huge thing that happened in addition to Frigos 3 at the same time. It required some changes, and 8 loot was not as popular as it was before, because that was the best way to do Frigos 2 dungeons. But Frigos 3, they had modular dungeons at that point, and the dungeons were difficult enough when they came out that 8 yeah. loot was very hard to do, at least for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So I switched back to a five, four or five man composition. I did the Ice Dofus uh, fairly close to when it came out, one of the first on Solar. Wow. And I was... Um, now I wouldn't say it was any sort of expert, but <laughs> since I was a math major, I had a little bit of an advantage in Count Herborg because all the Ooh. pie stuff that confused some people Trigonometry. every day for me, right? Yeah. Um, so I did, I did count fairly easily. I helped some people through it and I was, I was decent. And then I, there wasn't a lot more content that came out uh, around then. They were kind of doing things around, uh, for Gus 3, they were adding the double bosses, which I did eventually. Then what was the next big content expansion? Was it Dimensions first or was it Abyssal? I'm not I am not entirely sure. Dimensions, sure. right? I've missed Enurado all of that part. was the first one. So I did Enurado and Strombad, and then I took a long break. I think I came back and did Zelorium ish mm -hmm. And then my, that was one of my bigger breaks. I came back several years after that. Abyss, all the Abyssal stuff had come out. I didn't do that. Talkasha came out. The dungeon, not the server. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. Um... What else? Uh, Ivory, of course. Ebony and Ivory. I didn't do those when they came out. I missed mm -hmm. those. Then, I think, yeah, it was around 2020 when I came back, and there had been a lot of content that I hadn't done. It was around the beginning of the, all the stay-at-home stuff in 2020. Yeah, and I was, pandemic. And I had a lot of spare time or time at home, and I figured, what if I went back to Dopus and finally finished it this year? <laughs> and, uh, sadly, as evoked earlier, I did not finish it, but I did also start on Shadow in 2020. At the end of 2020, that's when my guild was created, so I, that's probably when it happened. Mm. I gave up on the regular server and went to Shadow in 2020. Mm, spectacular. And, yeah, so that's it. I right, do not so... have as much experience on anything that came out in the past mm. 10 years, <laughs> sadly, <laughs> which uh, puts the claims I... of encyclopedic knowledge sort of I mean, in that's, doubt. That, that's really good. That means you've got loads to look forward to, but I'm convinced that the stuff that you've already engaged with, uh, you have really firm grasp of it given the difficulty and the setup of the shadow server you have to know your stuff otherwise boom complete wipe and just speaking of that there is a question on from chat um uh would you like to tell us just verbally what is this difference because some people seem to think that if you die the mobs retain your items and you can go back and get them and some others tell you no 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 that's not happening anymore they're gone I'm not sure how reliable that second person would be. But in general, there are two fairly similar types of servers. There were the heroic servers, which uh -huh. were the first to come about, and those were PvP focused. So you could attack anybody except if you were in the safe zones, which were Astrub and maybe a few maps. I've never played the heroic servers. I hate PvP. I especially would hate if somebody just randomly killed me and I lost all my progress because of yeah. an aggro. Um, but those the heroic servers are the PvP ones where your gear was given to the winner. In 
PvP fight, your gear and experience went to the victors of that combat. Mm -hmm. And against monsters, your gear was distributed among the monsters in the area. Okay. So that's um, I, probably because it was difficult to craft stuff back then, so they uh -huh. didn't want to destroy too many resources. But that is where that comes from. If you died in a dungeon, for instance, you could have somebody else in your guild or some other of your characters go to that dungeon and fight the mobs and get your gear back. Yeah. And I believe later on they modified it so that a percentage of your gear is destroyed, but the rest is distributed. I don't remember exactly when that was. And, of course, the heroic servers are now... Uh, defunct they shut them down both yeah. automustum and thanatena which was open later mm -hmm. so those those are gone and none of that happens anymore shadow is uh, epic i guess is what they call it yeah. it has no pvp death which is great i could not play on a server that does and your gear is destroyed on loss completely irreversibly gone you have to start from scratch nice and we've gotten wind from the conversation with Papino the other day that the heroic type servers are not coming back anytime soon. To so much to the disappointment uh, bon of many players. I would say bon débarras personally. <laughs> Fair enough. It is quite draconian as a type of play. Fantastic. Um, I feel like we have a rough idea about what a pretty good idea I'd like to say about what the shadow server is like, the rules. Is there any any peculiarities that would perhaps surprise us to know about things that you encounter on your day to day? Anything that comes to mind? So I would start with the basics. Um, obviously, one of the things you can get killed by is protectors, resource protectors. If you're harvesting, so you want yes. to have a separate. Harvesting character, profession character. Um, also, you don't want to have your professions on any of your characters that you're doing fights with, because if you lose those, that was one of the things I did at first in 2020. Oh, wow. The first time I played on Shadow, I had all my professions on my main character, uh, foolishly, and when I team wiped, I lost those. So subsequent to that, I made a special <laughs> profession character, and that's what you. That's one of the first um, recommendations I would give to anybody if you want to do professions. Have, uh -huh. a spec have a second character for it, or a, sp mm. a special character that you don't use in regular fights. Mm -hmm. And since the revamp, a couple, maybe several years ago now, the resource protectors present a real danger yes. to you. Mm. They, they scale with your level, and they can hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So one of the things most people do if they have a low-level profession character is they'll craft a set that gives a lot of neutral resistance, uh, plus neutral resistance, fi fixed resistance, because that's what the protectors hit in. You mm -hmm. can basically be invincible. They don't deal any damage to you if you have enough uh, fixed resistance and neutral so that's something that they can that's something people do personally oh. my resource uh character my profession character is 200 so i just have a basic set on her that lets her uh, defeat the resource protectors normally so nice recommendation one yeah that, that is a golden tip for anyone listening have <laughs> fixed neutral resistances against uh resource protectors whether you're in shadow or not that is valuable. We did not know that. Thank you very much. What else? What else come to mind? The other one is keep everything in your bank or your haven bag. Do not have a bunch of commas and gear you're not using and resources you don't need at that time on any of your characters. Uh, empty your characters frequently if you're doing something that you consider risky. And especially don't keep your commas on you because there's no need to do that. You go into your haven bag, you put them in the chest, it takes 10 seconds. And you uh, avoid... Doing what I did again in 2020 by keeping all your character, all your commas on your main character. Um, Heartache. <laughs> those are the two basics. Cool. The, the simplest things I would tell anyone. That explains why before every quest fight of yours, there is a big period where you're just going and sorting out your inventories, getting rid of everything that you could possibly lose. Despite all the preparation and knowledge of the game, you still take all necessary precautions. <laughs> that is impressive. Yeah, that's a good reminder. If there's if there's a fight you can do that doesn't require gear, uh, take all your gear off. That is a mistake I learned the hard way. Oh, as in the but, ones uh, where you transform into something like um, Fury or a Ball Grot. Exactly. In every incarnation fight like that, or he wants to be buried at sea, the mini dungeon there, you can also do gearless. Don't ask mm. me how I know. Um, another <laughs> quick tip. I would give for people starting out, uh, there's some a couple quests in Astra that can be a little bit scary. Uh -huh. so one is the one where you fight close combat. Uh, you fight the fires. That can That's a, a group fight. You probably won't be able to do it solo at level 40 or whatever. So mm -hmm. be careful of that. Another one is the uh, Enus. I forget what the quest is called. That's embarrassing. Because I don't do this anymore. I don't do Silver Dofus anymore. It's a waste of time, mm. in my opinion. 
Um, the quests are long and there's very little benefit. But the big one, the one that's killed me personally, is the Bear Man. Uh, you need to be careful of the Bear Man because it plays. <laughs> he plays before you do. And he will run up to you, summon a bear at range. The bear will run and pull you. I think the combined range is something like 14. Ooh. can get you on turn one. Good and uh, it will one-shot you. So that is how I lost my craw the first time, was getting one-shot by the bear man and Astrid before I even had a chance to play. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, recommend you reset the map, have a very long range map. The bear man will get you. Oh, so reset the map as in do fights outside of that map in order to change the starting positions. Is that right? Exactly. That is another thing, another tip I would have. Of course, people do that all the time on regular servers, uh, but especially on if you have like a distance team, and you, it, you uh, always beneficial to reset the map to make things a little bit easier on you. Impressive. Uh, you, I mean, it's unlikely anybody was watching my stream from Thursday, but I was doing that in the Fangs of Glass. That's an area that I should be able to you know, defeat any size mob without any problems because I'm level 200. But a mob of eight, I reset the map from a close combat one to a distance one, mm. just in case. Uh, so you can safe. never be too careful on Shadow mm. would be my general <laughs> my general uh, advice there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is terrific. Absolutely, completely different from anything I've ever seen as a game mode or as a way of approaching the game. It's so terminal and fatal that every fight requires your full attention. And I don't think it is for me because three quarters of the time I'm brainlessly playing, doing high level difficulty dream fights and things like that. And safe in the knowledge that I can just repeat as many times that it takes. <laughs> Sandbox I would environment. Say for sure, <laughs> if you have a big community and you're always looking at the chat and reacting with them, uh, it's a yeah. lot harder to play on Shadow. <laughs> so that right. uh, might not be fit for you. In general, Massive. Hmm. It, the ideal, and this is what I try to do, is to have a separate team on a classic server, in my case, Talkasha, where before doing something on Shadow for the first time, you first do it on the classic server. Yes. See if there's any sort of uh, trickery going on there. For instance, when I was doing my third round of Turks, I had I had done Bullgrab before, but I tried it again on Talkasha because you can do it for free in Mariana's basement. Yeah. And I realized they had changed the fight. <laughs> they oh, had uh, yeah. made it easier slash harder and i would not have been aware of that if i had not practiced it again on bullgrod so even if it's something you've done before or on bullgrod not, the bullgrod server is gone on talkasha i meant so even if it's mm. something you've done before you might want to try it again if at all possible yeah yeah that is that holy shit that is wow <laughs> so you do spend a lot of time in mariana's basement <laughs> i spent a good number of hours there for bullgrod specifically yeah Question from Chad, Dersha. How do dream wor dreams work in Shadow? Is it like PVM, traditional PVM? So dreams are considered a PVM fight. If you die in dreams, you die as you would against any other monster. Your Everything is wiped and you lose your equipment and character. So is there... So probably, why, probably why not a lot of people do dreams on Shadow. Wow, yeah. There's a lot of unexpected stuff. It is... If, if you ask me about the most difficult thing to do in this game, I wouldn't say dreams automatically. I would say dreams in shadow. That is incredibly difficult because you can't force it. And we've had this conversation during my last stream. You'll have to think ahead of every fight about all the minor interactions that might screw you during that fight. The mechanics of mobs and bosses and things like that. And it's just so hard. It's incredibly difficult. Yes, yeah, so I exactly. imagine there are the different... many legendary items there. Yeah, there are a few. I mean, there are people who do dreams, right? They have mastered PVM to that level. Uh, I'm not one of them. Mm. There are a couple. There's a Buharado, there's a Lady Jessica, there's some of the other lesser legends. Wow. To the best of my knowledge, there is not a Josh or any of the mm. new legends. Mm. But there are, I do know a couple of people. Well, I know of a couple of people. I'm not really plugged into the French community. Mm. But I do know of some people who are doing dreams and have reached a higher level, like 25. So if they get lucky, maybe we'll see some more legendaries, but I'm not in the market for any right now, at least. But as you said, I agree that Dreams is the most difficult content because it's impossible to practice. All the different variables that you can have, the floor, the mobs, the placement, the modifier, the dream, nightmare, whatever. There's so many different things that go into it that it's impossible to get that exact same combat on a classic server to practice. Mm -hmm. So you have to theory craft it, like you said, 100%. Just think of every possible interaction. It's, uh, it's a lot. I have nothing but respect for people who do dreams, especially, and this is, I find this completely ridiculous. Somebody did Volbus during the event, so they did yes. not have access to all the gears that you normally have. I, I can't even imagine doing that. Medimoatu. 
he did it on three out of four characters and he's a pro yeah, pvp a player it blew my ridiculous. mind do you know what it takes to do all the fights that you have to do Krokosko, the dungeons it's just mm. wow 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 the one advantage if you're doing volbus specifically is you drop the items faster because of the triple drop but you know, that is a minor advantage compared to everything else that goes into it hmm. That is a good bonus, but that reduces the difficulty of the content in no way, shape, or form. <laughs> right, I'm conscious that we've hit the one hour mark, and I usually like to take a five to ten minute break. Is that okay with you, Jay? Of course, I'll go refill the drink. Yeah, refill the drink, use the toilet, whatever it takes, and then we shall reconvene in about, seven, should we say seven minutes? Is that good enough? That works for me. Just let me know. <laughs> cool. I shall, we shall resume. Thank you very much for watching all. Uh, break and then we return. See you in a bit. Um, welcome back, Jay. How are you still feeling about the whole conversation? Still excited to keep going? Yep. Uh, there is actually one thing that I do want to mention about okay. what I said previously. I don't <laughs> want anybody to get the wrong idea. Um, a lot of that might have sounded like bragging. I'm not personally very advanced on the Shadow server. I've never done a dungeon 190 plus, 190 or 200. So I've never mm -hmm. done any of the hard dungeons. I haven't done any of the hard quests like four out of six or ivory or ebony, abyssal, anything like that. So I've confined myself to doing the lower level stuff, crimson, turquoise, multiple times to get some backups if need be. And I hope to in the future advance to the higher level content. So it don't, don't look to me as any sort of authority on higher level PVM <laughs> or questing or anything like that. All my knowledge there is secondhand. It's okay. It's okay. We all know what we know. And we don't pretend to be anything else other than that. Right, for the next section, I had titled it Forum, Typos, Bots, and Reports. Would you... Does that ring a bell? Does that bring anything to mind? Oh, you're going to talk about my, my bots? I thought this was not an ambush. <laughs> I did say I was going to ambush you with a few questions. No, no, it's in yeah, the spirit of reporting bots. <laughs> yeah. Reporting bots. I'm prepared to talk on any of those topics. Let's do it. Um, one thing that I think is your claim to fame, the thing that surprised me the most on top of everything spectacular that you're already doing on Shadow and the achievements on Talkasha, uh, is when I realized what your handle was, what your username was, and then I went to the forum to have a look about your contributions and realized that you're pretty much the most active member on the forum, report, reporting bots, reporting typos in anything they produce, right? You're literally doing a lot of work to make sure Ankama is presentable outside. What can you tell us about that? So I have a Twitter account, which I believe I mentioned previously, and I opened that because I saw some bots on Talkasha, or I suppose it was Echo at the time. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing is they were recycling or what, treasure hunts, roses of the sands to create mm -hmm. nuggets. And then they were generating, they were just getting those nuggets for free because they were using bots. And so they were generating hundreds of thousands, 400, 500,000 nuggets per week. And then getting those for free, it was some big alliance. I don't remember which one. And I tried to report them and I couldn't, there was no way to do it. Uh -huh. um, I had to at or tweet, I guess, the Dofus Mods uh, Twitter account. Uh -huh. get them to finally hopefully um notice and i kept that up for a week um i think the better part of a month until finally i was contacted in game by a moderator who, uh, <laughs> i had to explain what they were doing right it was not aware you could recycle roses into nuggets unfortunately i suppose a lot of the uh since they're volunteers not all of them can keep up on all of the latest bots and whatever yeah uh, all their all their doings Mm. Uh, but they did ban some of those, and I did not see that those specific bots recycling nuggets or yeah, recycling roses into nuggets in those Let's specific go. zones. So that <laughs> was kind of a victory. Um, yes. But of course, against bots, it's always a hollow victory because they always move on. They just make yeah. new bots. Yeah. Um, I used to report bots extensively via Anka Box to Fiora, and also some bots on Shadow. Mm -hmm. to whoever the shadow moderator is. I've forgotten. It's been so long. Mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore. I think it's just, uh, it, it's not worth it. So I've okay. kind of given up on that. I would say bots, I've given up. Um, I, it's not my responsibility, I would say, to uh, combat bots. And the tools that we as players have are extremely limited and ineffectual. So I've, I've given up. Um, but the rest of what you said, I try to be fairly active in. The typo stuff is just, I'm sort of naturally pedantic. Mm -hmm. So when I see a typo in a game, I, I like to report it. Wow, uh, okay. 
you know, the English stuff has always been a little bit of a second class citizen. Any of the non French communities were getting it secondhand or later and sometimes poorly translated. Yes. So I do try to bring that up. There's a lot. I, I, I mean, if I were to everything that I read, because I read a lot of the quest dialogues while I'm doing them, if mm -hmm. I reported everything that I wasn't 100% agreeing with, agreeing with in terms of phrasing or whatever, I would never be done. And also, that's. It's, it's You'd too never much play right. the they game. Make their own choices <laughs> about how to convey information, and I, uh, you know, I accept those. You'd end uh, up typos, sometimes just, just things that are wrong in the quest. Mm -hmm. I do try to report those whenever possible. I think I'm one of the most active reporters in the typos slash. Um, What's it called? <laughs> yeah. The, the typos thread. forums. Typos and spelling mistakes. There we yes. go. Yeah. yeah. And bugs whenever possible, although since they are no longer working on the Flash client. I don't really report client bugs anymore. Okay. Uh, they're not, they're not going to do anything about that. And I assume most of them are known and they'll hopefully fix them in Unity. But things that are on the server, um, I do, especially things that impact Shadow, I do try to report those whenever possible. Ah, fantastic. So you are highly active in there. If anyone ever wants to know about how these things happen, let's say I find a typo in the game somewhere in a dialogue or an item or something like that. How do we report it? Uh, so there is a forum, li there's a link to that, I guess I don't know <laughs> if you have the link. Um, but there is a category in the forum, can I go ahead and put that in the chat if people are interested? I will put that on in the background, I'm in the forum. Where do we go from here? There we go. Uh, yes, so this is going to be under, I just have the link saved, so I never remember. It's under technical discussions on the right bar. Technical discussion, yes. Known and, issues, uh, bugs. Yeah, so you gotta, you gotta click the little plus sign next to it to open up the, the categories, or they might be here. Little plus sign? Am I not... Is, do you mean the Ankama sign? Oh, under the, uh, the categories thing, you can click the plus next to technical discussions, and it'll, bring down, it'll open a drop-down. Oh, yes. Ankama you. launcher. Better. Can we just agree before we proceed that it's incredibly hard, even with the best of intentions, wanting to provide them with information, tell them about something, report something. It's so hard to find on the forum, isn't it? Oh, for sure. Uh, that was one of the things that was mentioned in your Discord, right, is one of the questions. Can we finally get a good way to report this sort of thing? And I yeah. upvoted that because I definitely agree. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how I found this forum initially, but it's certainly not presented to the user in a way that's easy to find. But this is the one right here. Not this one right here. This is the problems and solutions one. But one of those categories is typos and spelling mistakes. Uh, this, this aggregates, I think, this also has several subcategories there in the right menu. I believe one of them is bug reports, and then there's going to be... And I oh, think this is yeah. your handle. This is the one name that yeah. I have seen. Pop up. And there's all my characters. <laughs> On repeat. <laughs> wow. How many of them do you have? Holy smokes. <laughs> so I do wow. on most of my accounts, all of my accounts really, I have five characters per server type because I do the Almanacs a lot to uh, try to recoup some of the costs of subscription. Yes. Yes, that is my profile. And you can see if you look on the forum, you'll see that little profile picture pop up often yes uh, in the most recent one in 2.72 they modified the drops from Emanita. it no longer drops a mushroom that was like a level 30 or 60 whatever item 36 yeah. i think something like that and it was one of the drops from the amanitas in the incarna mine and so mm -hmm. i think people were farming those for easy mushrooms so they removed the mushroom from the drop list and they took it out they also um, removed the vulva vulva with an mm -hmm. o that drops from the mushrooms and that was that appears to have been unintentional because it still drops the mushroom no longer drops it's actually removed vulva appears to have been dropped or removed inadvertently and so you I spotted that, that. Ooh. yeah so i signaled that and they said they were uh they would look into it and get back to me which is not something that happens very often a lot of times you report <laughs> something and just never hear back yeah, I suppose the natural question to ask after this is, have they recognized your effort in any way, being the top contributor on the forum, um, making sure every time you notice something you do report it, has that translated into any sort of partnership recognition? Are you part of the content creator program, the official one? 
I would say I'm, I'm probably very far from the top um, what a, uh, notifier <laughs> mm -hmm. um, of bugs or even typos or anything like that. I just, the English community especially um, is pretty small. So it looks like I've done a lot because I'm the, the, la the most recent yeah. three or four in some of these categories. But if you go to the bigger categories, like the general or the problems and solutions that aggregate several different categories, mm -hmm. I barely show up. I'm, I'm nothing special here, I would say. And okay. they, they tend not to do that sort of thing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the French version of this forum, there are people who are much, much more active than I am. They, uh, I mean, they have nothing either. <laughs> For the Statis most part, yeah. when I, before I report a thing, I will check the French version to see if it's already reported there because ah, I know they look at that first. Wise. And then I, I won't bother reporting it in English as well because it just, you know, kind of wastes their time and mine. Yeah repetition does not lead to anything and from here right, i wanted to segue to, to something a lot more technical something that we've all used at one point in time called wiki the dofus english wiki what can you tell us about this website to begin with do you know anything about its history how it came to be who started it does anybody own it wiki do people still use this it's hard today <laughs> yes just for, use most. for the noobs for everything right Yes, but in the earlier things in the game, this is a gold mine. It's brilliant, and it's in English as well, which Dofus Pauline Oops does not support at all. Not by default, right? Translation, mm. of course, these days yeah. is fairly advanced. Mm. What can so you tell Dofus us about wiki, this website? Mm. Uh, this originally was a wiki, a wiki, right? They were perched, they were uh, bought, I suppose, by fandom. So, a controversial move to be sure uh the dofus wiki is a classic wiki if you have any familiar with wikipedia any familiarity with wikipedia or something yeah. like that it's similar mm -hmm. anybody can come in and edit this you don't need to create an account although i mm -hmm. recommend it for reasons we'll get into later yeah. and all this information is publicly visible you can mm -hmm. see all the changes that were made and by whom you can make mm -hmm. your own changes you can discuss those changes um it's at one point, this was the main repository of information in the English language about yeah. Dofus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I kind of miss those days. That was when I started playing. I would actually, one of my friends in the game uh, once derogatorily referred to me as a wiki reader. So I, every time he brought <laughs> something up, he'd be like, oh, well, you can craft that as a level 40 handyman. Or, oh, well, uh, that's yeah. a 0.5% drop from the uh, sewer keeper or whatever. He'd be like, just stop reading the wiki. Just play the game. Um, <laughs> stop reading. I, I know, right? Uh, but I, as I mentioned, I did level my main yacht, uh, my yacht Jalia, whom I still play today, although yeah. not on Talkasha all that much. Uh, according to a guy that I believe is still on the wiki, one of the intelligence yacht guides that I thought was very funnily written, had a, got a lot of good information, all the things you needed to know, starting from scratch, where to level, what to wear, what spells to level, because of course it was a lot more constraining back in those days. And yeah. I, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed having that information just available when I needed it. And of course, as time has gone by, everyone's aware the wiki has become more and more out of date as people stopped updating it. People just prefer to, prefer to use Dofus Pule Noobs, which they run through a translator and just use that. And for enough. the most part, it is mm. uh, as useful, if not more, than the thing would be on the wiki because a lot yeah. of the new quests, especially, are not present on the wiki. Yes. So if you want to get information on those, there's nowhere else you can go except for DPLN, as yeah. they call it. It's not the most up to date, but the old stuff is still there. They have had difficulties keeping up with the influx of new content of updating as things ebb and flow when they release an update and change something about a dungeon. It's not automatic that somebody goes there and updates it on the same day or a few days later to make sure it's right. But here's what I've noticed. Uh, your handle on Discord is saxophone. Did I, did I say it right? It's six o phone. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, that is certainly a way to pronounce it. Yes. Is that how in, you intended it? Or six of one? It is a six of one, like the classic idiom. Right. Okay. Six of one. And then when you go to recent wiki activity, you see on the last two hours, six of one. Offer in the post, 21 hours, six of one. <laughs> a fandom user, one day ago, randomly. And then again, you... What can you tell us about your contributions, first of all? And is it true that you are the absolute number one top contributors in this wiki? Uh, so that is accurate in terms of number of contributions, which is not a stat that I uh, think is particularly important. But I am one of the last people 
we're still updating the wiki. And even though I am, I would say I'm struggling to try to bring it up to date. It's a very long process. I've not made as much progress as I would like. Do you can see? I mean, if you're scrolling down it, all of the, all of the updates I made recently are for the offering <laughs> quests, which are almost worse wow. than useless. Although I have seen somebody use them at one point, which I thought was pretty cool. But we can get to that later. But yes, I do update the wiki. Um, Minimally, my goal is to someday bring this back up to fully featured, right? All the information in the game that's necessary. It's a very long goal. It takes a very long time. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it can be kind of depressing sometimes seeing how far behind it is. We have a lot to catch up, but it is one of my plans. One other thing that I have noticed is if you don't have an account, there is an IP address here as an identifier of the contributors. What on earth is that all about? So that is the default setup of all of these fandom wikis is the way it identifies you. If you don't create an account, it's gonna list you by your IP. That's how you can tell um, you know, who made some changes. If it's one person editing the same article over and over again, or a bunch mm. of different articles, how you detect like spammers and vandalism and that sort of thing. Yeah. I have asked them um, if there was a way to mask that because I don't think it's great that anyone's oh. IP address is just publicly visible. Uh, apparently that's just how it is so my own ip address is here once because they uh, logged everyone out and i did not notice so if you <laughs> scroll back far enough a couple months and you knew what to look for you could find exactly where i'm located um in texas so that's uh, <laughs> something i don't like but yeah what can you do so it's i would a recommend massive oversight mm -hmm. yeah so if you're going to use the wiki at all number one use an ad blocker um, the ads on fandom are atrocious. Mm. They are uh, overly intrusive. They use tons of bandwidth. They get in the way of all the content. They suck. They're one of the worst things about fandom. For the record, anything negative you've heard about fandom, I probably agree with and wish we could switch away. Uh, it is not feasible, <laughs> sadly. Yeah. You're stuck with this platform. Uh, what can you do? But number one, always use an ad blocker, at the right. very least on this website. You should probably be using it everywhere that you don't specifically want to support a content creator because just for safety reasons. Um, but definitely on fandom here because the money, I mean, it's not going to anything good, but you didn't, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> okay. I hope nobody from fandom is, is watching this. <laughs> watching. I'm, I'm, I'm trouble. They might watch it later on if they recognize your uh, name, your handle. <laughs> now, the, the dopest wiki is quite small compared. I mean, like the, it's probably like the Doctor Who wiki or the uh, My Little Pony wiki or whatever on this. It has 15,000 times as many users as Dofus, so Ooh. they'll never notice okay fair enough so use an ad blocker next thing is create an account perhaps to stop it showing your ip address uh, if you felt like editing the wiki which i would be delighted to see anyone do that mm -hmm. absolutely 100 percent. first thing you should do create an account to not show your ip address to everybody fantastic i have in anticipation of this conversation created an account and i would love for you to show us a demonstration because to say the least and in complete honesty, this is daunting. When you log into the wiki, you don't know what anything means. It looks like uh, I've gone into developer mode of some sort of backend phone or whatever. <laughs> and I just have no idea how to navigate it, really. Okay. Uh, well, just to re re um, well, re what, am, what am I trying to say? Clarify what I said earlier. You don't need an account to use the wiki. Of course, uh, your IP address will not be leaked just by looking at these pages. It's only if you are actually editing and making changes to the pages themselves that you need to be concerned about that. Deal. So yeah. do you have anything that you would like to update on the wiki? Something you know is out of date? Information you would like to add? Do you have anything prepared? Are there, or if not, suggest something. Perhaps the... Spells. I know there's been an update recently, and I've covered it extensively on one of the videos I've posted recently on my YouTube channel. Anybody who wants to see it, I've put, I've pinned my socials at the top, and YouTube is amongst them. And it covers all the changes of the spells that we have seen recently, and I don't think they have changed anything about it. 245. So yeah, this is quite outdated. Yeah, so one thing you'll run into is that everything is out of date. None of the new variants, for the most part, are on here. Mm. Um, so it's tricky to find something that is just out of date enough that it's useful to update. I is believe there... even... Well, Fargonaut is here now, but it used... No, sorry, not Is Fargonaut. the Forge um, launch Forge here to begin with? It's not on there. What? No! No, that's incredible. Uh, <laughs> perhaps we could go for the Anutroph, for example. They've, uh, what is it called? The Spade of the Ancients. 
now is um, it, it's non-modifiable range. How do I change that wow. in this wiki? First, you would have to add the page for Spade of the Ancients. Uh, one thing I will say is that for the most part, things that can be automatically updated or automatically created, like the spells, the items, the uh, equipments or subsets of items, I suppose, the monsters, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things, prefer, I am, <laughs> I'm hoping to one day get to those. And I would, I would prefer that those be done automatically to yes. save human effort for information like quests and dungeon strategies and tutorials, guides, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I would recommend not going in there and modifying all the spells manually unless you want to and you see something that is just shortly out of date. But um, the main thing that I've done so far is I've tried to automatically update the items. So a okay. lot of those were out of date for a very long time. Most of those should be good now. Can you give um, us an example? One of, things, uh, one of the things, an example of what? Sorry. <laughs> of some item or something to change, given that you're the expert here. You have done a lot of changes here and you quite know your way around it. I couldn't think of anything on the top of my head. Uh, my head. Just something that we can get into and see a practical experience of how you edit it and perhaps how you get it validated, maybe. I don't know what the process okay, looks so like. Something I had intended to do at some point, but the mm -hmm. special spells page, I believe you were looking at a link to that earlier, that is quite out of date. Special spells. Class spells, spells. Perhaps if I return, special. Is it the special spell? Should I go into this one? Uh, sorry, let me make it full screen so I can see. <laughs> Uh, it's not, it's very small, so I got to use the stream, which is a little bit laggy. But yeah, here you go. So this is the list of special spells. Yeah. As you can see, this does not have all of the latest updates. It doesn't okay. have all the variants. It doesn't have things like Cannon Bubble and Mantis Grog. Yeah. Yes. So this I can't is something I was something I was planning to update at one point, uh, but I got sort of lost in a rabbit hole. Because mm -hmm. what happens is I'll look at this and say, okay, this needs to be updated. I actually got here from. I was updating a page for one of the Amber Ochre quests, which okay. are not on here yet. Uh -huh. And one of the strategies I was saying was it can be useful to use Burnt Pie because it okay. hits low damage in an off element. Mm -hmm. But Burnt Pie is not on the wiki yet. So I went to the special spells page. I was like, okay, I'll add it. Uh, they, they, I'll add a, a list <laughs> that shows all the special spells and the variants and abstentions or whatever. And then I was looking through the existing ones and I noticed that the summon skill. Uh, we were using the image from Dofus Purley Noobs. That's a, yeah. that's a big no-no. We can't use their content without permission. So I had to replace that with a, a new image that conveys pretty much the same information, but oh. that was created by a wiki editor um, to avoid any sort of copyright issues there. So <laughs> me intending to update one of the quest pages, uh, ended up, instead I ended up spending two hours <laughs> on some visualization <laughs> The just goes on the hole. one page. Um, yeah, exactly. So it, it can be tricky to update just the one thing, but here is one. So if you wanted to add just the new spells that were added to the list of special uh -huh. spells, mm -hmm. that would be a, a worthwhile endeavor. Okay. Um, let's add Canny Bubble. What is your process for adding a new spell here that later on we could go and read upon how to find it and okay. things like that? So there are two ways to edit the wiki. One mm -hmm. is the visual editing mode and the other is the source editing mode. And Ooh. so visual is going to open a sort of uh, WYSIWYG editor, if you're mm -hmm. familiar with that, a what you see is what you get editor, mm -hmm. which is going to hopefully look like the end result. And then you can make some changes there and you'll see how they'll be reflected in the end. So I believe that common spell section right there. Yeah is going to have, there's a little bit of a, an icon next to it. It's like a pencil, I think is what yeah. that's supposed to be. Yeah. If you click and on I'm that, literally editing the wiki as we speak right now. You are. So that's mm -hmm. going to be just an unordered list, I think, right there. So you could just go down to where it says weapon skill and click at the end of that line and then hit enter. And that would probably open or add a new little, what are they called, bullet point. And then you could add whatever you wanted to right there. There you go. And the other thing is now I'm starting to gather the elements for why you have encyclopedic knowledge. And as you said, pedantic, you are very accurate in the way you speak, the way you talk about things and the way you name them. Perhaps you could be fantastic with uh, the bot that Gluto has created where it asks you the name of a mob, a random monster from the game twice a day. Um, 
because you have to pay so much attention into putting the right exact information into the wiki that you do read with care and you type with care and you start thinking with care. Is that a fair summary, do you think? I think that's accurate that I, I try to be uh, precise when it comes to DOFA stuff. Although, honestly, uh, not pointing fingers at anybody, but that bot, I was a little bit surprised. One of them a couple months ago was the Sea Sora shell, which I believe has not been in the game for several years. So I was, uh -huh. I was uh, impressed to see that people <laughs> correctly guessed that when it's not a mob that I think most people would see. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's no surprise. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no surprise that people use uh, external aids. So your process here's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to gauge what canny bubble is and what it's what, how, how it's written essentially and i'm gonna have to go to the game and try and fetch the data from there is that how you do it as well or is there more to it and perhaps do we want to get into how you do it yourself things slightly differently for one the the two modes that i mentioned the visual editing is the one you did right there i use the source editor i don't know if you want to try that as well to show what that looks like maybe That's open like safe. a copy of the page so ah. it doesn't uh, modify doesn't edit or doesn't uh, interfere with what you were doing okay where is the other editor the one i'm going to hate using is it at the top okay. <laughs> uh yes so right at the the edit that's going to open the source editor, I think. No! No! <laughs> what is this atrocity? <laughs> so that is probably... <laughs> that is going to look like a... Um, that is the raw... Well, not raw, but that is sort of the raw-ish HTML. It's technically wiki text. So a lot of things get interpreted specially. But that is what it looks like under the hood, if you will. So you can see instead of the nice bullet points, you just see the star in front of the line. That gets translated into a bullet point. It's a Two language. brackets around something mean that it's a, li a, w a link to another Hyperlink. page in the wiki. Ooh. So what you can see there is you added the comment spell in that section that was saved. It did work correctly, but yes. it is not yet a link. Now it is, but I don't know where I'm sending it by adding brackets. Guys, hacker man doing <laughs> the edits. <laughs> At the very it bottom of the screen there, you'll see the preview button with the little eye next to it. You're going to want to click on that to see what the changes are going to look like live before you save. Wow. <laughs> wow. There we go. So that changes. is. Woohoo. You can see that turns red. You see dead links in red. If you're a wiki editor, there's also the underline, I think. So it's not just the color. But that means that you, you added that spell. Thank you for adding Cannabubble. Yeah. Uh, this page does not currently exist. And of course, the question is going to be, did you spell it correctly? <laughs> yeah, I think, I hope. This is where we find out that I'm the, a terrible editor and I should never get anywhere close to the wiki. <laughs> so I would, one thing I would say is don't be afraid of making mistakes. The only thing that matters is the end result. And it's always a journey. So as long as you are editing in good faith and not trying to vandalize things, people will add links to spam sites or their own websites or whatever or just delete a page and add profanity or whatever. Any of those are going to get you, uh, you're going to, your edit will get reverted. And if you do it enough times, you will get permanently banned. Or I don't know about the permanent ban. Uh, you'll get banned for a while, and that's usually enough to stop people from doing it. But as long Good as enough. you're trying to do things, uh, mm -hmm. we will not just ban you or revert your edits for no reason. We may fix them. Like if you had left it that way, I or somebody else would probably come along and add the, add the brackets to make it a link. Okay, fair enough. The thing, you know, we added a link, and then you could come back and see if you had made the edit and watched that page. Technically, it would show you all the updates that get made, and you could right. see that an, an additional update had been made, and you could see what happened, and that would hopefully inform your future edits. Wow, and you can see you that can I have been added. A, you can also add a link. Sorry. Oh yeah. This is my name. <laughs> I'm here. This is me. Top editor first of edit. the month of the day. <laughs> uh, top editor Probably of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> there you go so you can also add links and in the uh, visual editor anything you do in the source editor you can do in the visual editor okay. i use the source editor because i do a lot of automatically generated stuff as you were talking about earlier how do i get this information yes uh, the answer is that i have a friend a very close friend of mine who is a data miner mm -hmm. not in the usual sense that a twitch streamer would data miner Apologies for the joke. Um, he is a data miner, so he gets the information directly from the game files, which is one of the, I mean, every, every, everything these days that people use is data mined, right? Defensive, yeah. Dofus DB, yeah. uh, all, all of the, the set creation, things like that, they're all data mined. Mm -hmm. So that's the only way to get good information. That's really one of the big limitations of the wiki historically is that mm -hmm. people were trying to keep up with these updates. So whenever 
something like they added a bunch of new items, people would go in there and add them all manually, or they modified the item stats, yeah. same thing. And yeah. so that's a big waste of time, right? If it can be done automatically. And my goal when I started editing the wiki was to get as much of that possible, as much as possible of that done automatically to, like I said, uh, reserve human effort for things that are more useful and cannot be done autom automatically, like guides and class guides and other types of guides, um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So for the most part, all the items, as I mentioned, should be up to date. Uh, if you see, if you want to make a change to an item, you can. But hopefully I will just get around to it at some point. Yeah, so I would get the information for a spell or something like that from my aforementioned friend mm -hmm. who does the data mining. Uh, if you didn't have that, you would probably go to DofusDB would be the easiest way. Yeah, yeah. If you were curious about the spelling of something, because they that's also data mined, so you're not going to have to run into any typos other than the ones made by Ankama. So numerous, as I think we've already established. <laughs> if you have any, have any any information you want to add, but you're uncertain of the specifics, mm. this DB would be your go-to. Um, nice. We can't. So copyright issues. We can't copy. You can't go to Dofus Perla Noobs, uh, copy a, a, a page like a dungeon page or whatever, paste it in Google Translate, and then put that put on the wiki. That would be a copyright violation. We really? Would not um, Despite but, changing the language. Uh, yes, copyright for the most part protects translations as well. That's why I can't like release a Harry Potter book in English or in French or whatever and call it my own because I, I, I would be, you know, the Good author example. owns the copyright on that. Mm. Um, but information, like the fact that a peewee feather drops from a peewee at, I don't know, 57% probability, that is not copyrightable. Gotcha. So if you're just getting raw information, you can get that from any source. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it can be helpful to find the, like Dovis DB is going to have the conditions for a quest drop, for instance, things that are not going to be visible in game. You'll just see the blue background to know that it is a quest drop, but it won't tell you what the conditions are. So you'd have to go to Dovis DB for something like that if you wanted to add it manually. Yeah. Um, and I suppose the question so, to ask here, I'm, I'm slightly surprised and taken aback by this. Uh, you are volunteering your time. You're not getting paid for this. Is that right? I, no, correct. I do not get paid for this. No, and, no wiki editor gets paid in any way. And these two websites are monetized. Why do they rely and have all these copyright protections and they rely on people doing unpaid labor when they are monetized? They generate funds. Why don't they use them towards better in their proposition, so to speak? Because they are businesses at the end of the day if they're generating money. Uh, the copyright issue, I mean, it's just, that's the law, right? You can't really get around that uh, monetized or non. Mm. So we, we don't we don't copy things from other sources. We don't also uh, host, one of the, my projects at the, the outset was to rip, well, I would get my friend to uh, get all the game images and upload them in much higher quality. Because currently we have the items and things like that in 200 by 200. Yeah. Uh, but I realized pretty quickly that <laughs> taking all the assets of a game, uploading them in high quality, um, that's going to be a no in terms of fair use, because that's what the wiki relies on. All this information can be used if it's in accordance with fair use, uh -huh. for the most part. Uh -huh. And so we use the smaller images because, you know, if Ankama wanted to take us down, they might be able to, but the rationale there, the fair use rationale, is that it's the simplest way to unambiguously identify something, is the image that it has in game. Wow. Um, so if I want to say a pink peewee feather, I could describe it and say it's the feather of a it looks like a feather, uh, it's pink in color, whatever, but the simplest way is just to have an image of that. So that's probably going to be in accordance with fair use. And we also use small images, the ones that they provide publicly on their website, 200 by 200. So yeah, yeah. fair use can be a little bit tricky. For the most part, it's not something the average editor has to worry about. Just don't copy information from other sources uh, wholesale. Oh, oh, sorry, information, again, just like numbers and data is fine but a guide or something like that from Dofus Prolinuums, we would not want you to copy that directly. Nice. That would, uh, it wouldn't expose the editors to any liability, um, you know, section 230 or whatever, but yeah. we would, uh, it might potentially get taken down. And again, this is not all that important. Um, I, Dofus Prolinuums is probably not gonna send a copyright notice to the English wiki, even if we did copy their stuff directly, but it's, yeah. uh, it just looks bad, right? If we're just yeah. uh, copying Dofus Prolinuums, I mean, what, what are we even doing True. at that point? True, right. true, 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 true. I, would prefer, I mean, it's okay to learn information. If you don't know a boss or you don't know all the details, you can go to Dofus Pula Noobs, you can read about it, you can learn and then make your own uh, guide or whatever that incorporates some of that information on the wiki. That's perfectly fine. Uh, the, the big issue is going to be wholesale copying. Yes, I agree. Yeah. It looks like you've so, not done any effort and just gone shopping for content out there and put it here for somebody else to make money off of and it doesn't look good. This is the latest exactly. image Especially, that you've posted, isn't it? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I recognize so this image it. Specifically, if you want to look at the history of this, uh, if you click on the name in the top left, I think that'll take you to the main page of this image, the controlfragments.png. Oh, yeah. Sorry, controlfragments location. Oh, and so this, this should show you the history of this image because images are not uh, deleted, right? They just get replaced. Oh, wow. You can see yeah, that okay. the previous yes. version of this, the oldest one, um, that is the exact image that appears on Dofus Perlin Oops. Um, that is a copyright violation. Uh, Use their image without permission. So that would be, uh, it's not good. <laughs> if we would prefer you not up upload other people's images directly. Um, the yeah. game images, like I said, we get around that because of probable fair use. But Dovis Perlin Oops, that is something that they created, their own work. Uh, yeah, we, we can't just use that without permission. Yeah, that is remarkable. Um, I just had a fleeting thought because we've mentioned the bot earlier. And I wanted to show everybody that there is an event happening right now, started by Gluto. He is the designer, the author of, um, uh, what is it called, of the uh, bot itself. So he made it and he designed a little challenge for the next month. So starting from the 1st of July until the 31st of July, uh, every day, twice a day, there is a little bot that will ask, that will put up a um, bot. I'm not explaining it properly because I'm thinking at the same time. <laughs> I'm trying to find that as well. Right. So if you join the Discord and go all the way at the top, channels and roles, there is a daily game. Guess the mob. It's a bot that was devised and made by Gluto to test knowledge as a little fun project that saw a lot of uh, success. People like it. So twice a day, you will get a monster with a high definition well, an image, it will give you where it is from, the race, some spells, the family it belongs to, and the top three will get rewarded by points. And it will show you how many times somebody has attempted it. So for the next month, he will be able to start seeing the points accumulated from the first until the last day of the month and reward one person with a special role with its own colors and the logo for an entire month until somebody else dethrones them. And this is the game, particularly I think uh, Jay would be fantastic at just because it relies heavily on getting the name right. And one thing I have found out about playing this game is I think I know the name of everything, but I know the spelling of nothing. I can tell you what the mob is generally, the name of it generally vaguely, where it is and stuff like that, but not the exact name because they're so difficult. Have you given it a try at some point, uh, Jay? Have you tried it? I tried it when I joined the server, but then I lost access to it in the the channel shuffle. And I haven't gotten back. I don't. Mm. It's it's time. I don't really like time pressure, <laughs> personally. Nice. Um, but if you wanted to make uh, another, I feel like all I've done so far about the wiki is say that if you try to edit it, you'll go to jail for copyright infringement. <laughs> which was really my yeah. Um, do you want to reiterate that you don't need to worry about that unless okay. you're copying? Big chunks of Dofus Pool and Noob's guides without modifying yeah. them, which you shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> but if you just want to edit the wiki and add any information you know of, that'll be fine. Uh, so I was wondering if maybe you wanted to edit another page uh, sure. currently. Yeah, yeah. Which one? So one of the one of the changes that was made recently that has not been reflected on this wiki, and for mm. the most part, is that a lot of the NPCs for some fights are now controllable. Yes, of course. Let's do the Volbis one. What is her name? Tilesia. How do I get that? Let's say I am you and I've had this thought. How the hell do you navigate this complex scheme of a wiki? Is there a search function somewhere? Yes, so there is a search function. Um, it is not as useful as it could be for sure, but it is the little, ah. there's like a, they redesigned this. It's the, the search uh, magnifying oh, glass is what it's called. There we go. So if you know oh. the exact name of a quest, you can probably find it. I usually just type... Yeah, I usually just go into the uh, the URL bar and type it there. There you go. Boom. Oh, look at these. Now I know what the red means. Hey, I am a pro pro wiki uh, editor. Yep. <laughs> I only speak with You're people with your... rendezvous now. From now on, about the wiki. I was gonna choose the the crimson because I know that one's up to date. Uh, this, okay. as you can see, is a stub page. It's set at the very top, which means it's missing a lot of the quest information. Oh yeah. I have not personally updated it. Uh, for instance. Well, this that just happened right here is one of the things that can happen. So this quest page, I believe, uh, can you can you go to the history? I believe this was created by me. 
History is in edits. Uh, edit source uh, history. Up top, yeah. Of course, I know this. I'm a pro editor. And <laughs> hey, yes, first try. yeah, it was you who created it on the 25th of May. There it says uh, that was actually my bot, <laughs> uh, the six of one bot, which is what I use to make automated edits these days. Ah. And so I created that page um, automatically, as it says there. So it's sort of like how Dofus DB does it. If you go to their page, any quest, you'll see that it has all the steps listed there. Those are generated <laughs> automatically, of course. They did not go there by hand and do every single step. And I did a similar thing here. And, I thought it was a joke uh, when I, I mentioned bots earlier and you were like, yes, all of my bots. <laughs> it wasn't a joke. Actually, you do have bots. <laughs> there he is, I do there have he a, is. the one bot here. I used to do all these updates <laughs> under my main account because yeah. bots are something you have to apply for special permission for. That's actually why I'm the number one editor, technically, because all of the automatic item updates were done under my main account. I see. Until I had access to bot accounts. So I have not updated the wiki personally 20,000 times. Okay. Um, a lot of those <laughs> okay that's a really... That's a, just in passing, I've noticed the comment section and very often I will find a quest uh, in here that I want just to add the solution to it, but I can't. I don't know how to add a comment. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I've never done it. <laughs> You've never added the comment. Okay. Fair enough. That's something to look um, for. Into. You might need to um, confirm your email, I believe. Already done, but it's still not giving me the ability to... Right, let's not get distracted. You said the Crimson. Crimson. Yeah. For the most part, I would say, if possible, instead of just leaving something in a comment, uh, try to update the page. If you can't, comment is better than nothing. And somebody Now can that I know how to update the page, I will not need to know about how to... Comment. <laughs> have another tool. Yes. For instance, Eternal Harvest is one of the things people would come in there and comment, oh, this monster was replaced by this. No. Um, so then somebody would go in and make those changes. I it think I know why updated. that happens. That is Dofus Polinub's culture because nobody, I don't think that anybody can just go and update Dofus Polinub. So the only method exactly. they have as a user is to go down to the comments and put updates. And people just scroll down to the bottom quickly to see if there's any novelty they are missing out on. Cool. Uh, I do that how... a lot myself for the, the pet, the pet, um, what is it called? The pet requirements for them to appear. A lot of them are out of date on the page, but they have yes. updated information in the comments. And I have seen that that is one thing that you would like to ask of Ankam. And that I think we've just spoiled the next question, the, uh, the bigger <laughs> uh, segment, right? Let's not get distracted. Which uh, okay. NPC should I uh, go for in, in which? Um... How about whip while the cream is hot? You can now control Gavroche in the fight against the three rogues. I believe rogue Ling, Oof. rogue, um, etc. cetera. <laughs> cool. yeah. So this is one thing, if you just want to pause here, you'll see the format that we're currently with, the historical one, is to have all the steps just listed as they are in game. Yeah. Then oh, most oh, of the information oh, oh, oh. is in those spoiler sections. Yes. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of that. I would like to have most of the pertinent information visible at a glance oh. on the page itself. Agreed. Um, I don't know how other people feel about that. I, I share. Depend. I share your... Uh, okay. Because we are, I'm, I'm so used to the Office Ball in a format that I don't need exactly. to know what the steps are. I need to know the step I'm in and what needs to be done. That's why I'm here for. I don't need a list. It's not like I'm compiling data for something or whatever. Right. Yeah, I believe this is a holdover from the olden days where you couldn't necessarily see every step of a quest. Uh, nowadays, you can just do that in game, or you can go to Dofus DB or whatever. And also, people are going to want these informations available. Uh, so I would say. I'm trying to get that changed. There's actually one guy on the wiki. Basically, most of his edits are just putting things into spoiler sections and like fixing up <laughs> things like that. The spoiler guy. So, uh, <laughs> you can see that sometimes an edit you make will get reverted. Um, you can just you can you know, go into the comments and talk about it, the talk page or whatever. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of a, it's a collaborative effort, right? Nobody has nice. final control over what everything looks like. Nice. So we're How all trying I... to work together update the dialogue now it's given me a template thing that wasn't present when i tried to update the previous page what is happening okay. so this is the big one a template is some sort of is a reusable piece of formatting that you can use as much as you want that's what reusable means i didn't need to define it but <laughs> templates you can drop into any page like this uh -huh. is a quest step template you can see it says generate okay. from quest step yeah i see and so the quest step is its own thing and it has a thing at the top. The talk to Gavroche is the, the text there. And it has a location, negative 7, negative 43. It's fine. You can just go ahead and edit that if you want. Okay. 
uh, Dwight just add a sentence towards the end to say the NPC can now be controlled. Oh my god, is this what the visual editor looks like for Quest Whoa. Step? No wonder people don't update the wiki. Um, oh, okay. It kind of got bigger there. Yeah. But not... What? <laughs> That's weird. Very good uh, well, this is after. why I use the source editor, apparently. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me use yes. the editor that you use. But then we'll have to use uh, symbols and whatever. So let's just add... <laughs> Yeah. So the, the dialogue, you probably don't want to change because I don't mm -hmm. believe there's any change in the dialogue. But the part of the page where it says what the fight is, I think it's going to be maybe a little bit higher up than this. Oh, so not the dialogue bit. This card right. edits. I mean, if you if you see the dialogue was changed, you can change it if you want. Nope, uh, for nope, the most nope. part, this dialogue is automatically generated. So uh, save some typing. But yeah, th that is the step right there. Defeat Rogue Angreen. You can see the dialogue in there says it starts a fight. That kind of describes the mobs in the fight and what they do. So you probably want to change that section. There we go. Right. Uh, it's So do we just add a little sentence towards the end? Or how do you think about things like that? That's a good question. The eternal question of the wiki is always how to effectively communicate this sort of thing to the end user. Yeah. So what does it Bold. say on this uh, Age already, I guess. Yeah, like bold is always a good choice. Yeah, yeah. I want to make it bold to say, now, update, now, you can control the NPC to help. Mm -hmm. So, up, uh, there's a section further down where it says other characters and sidekicks cannot join the fight, but you are joined by Gavrosh. If he dies, the fight is lost. So that yes. is where I personally would mention yeah. that that change has been made. Gavrosh is controllable. You control Gavrosh, so it's easy to keep him at range or away from the enemies. Other characters and sidekicks cannot join the fight. Other characters and sidekicks cannot join the fight. But you are joined by Gavroche, who is now controllable. Is that good enough? Or should I add more exclamation marks? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, uh, I would try to keep it a little bit dry and factual oh. uh, as much as possible. Holy shit. Yeah. I've have to It's fine to be excited, but somebody seeing this page <laughs> in five years probably won't understand why Why um... I was so excited in twenty twenty four. How do I make it bold? Oops. Is... I mean you've been looking at the visual editing right now and this is so bad. I gotta talk to somebody about this. This is yeah. I wonder nobody edits the wiki. Yeah, it's really difficult, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Well, I appreciate you being like a, a beta tester, I guess, for something that's been released for 15 years. Um, it's always interesting to see how other people are going to handle this. Oh. But you should be able to make something bold. The template, it just doesn't, doesn't work well. I've added that? Oh, what? what? It's now you controllable. Yeah, yes. Pro editor. Cool. <laughs> I'm happy. I don't want to become an expert in this or push it to the next level. I'm sure it is within our um it's it's with it's safe with uh competent people who are already working on it. Oh, somebody's put a last GIS, you have to defeat the boss. Whatever that means. I'm sure <laughs> capable hands are handling this situation. I'm not going to be editing a lot. If I see something uh, that I come across ineffective Something that I can just add like a little sentence, this here or there, I would happily do that. But I don't think I have the capacity or the focus to be that precise for long periods of time editing something like that. Yeah, it oh, yeah, certainly takes a lot longer than you might expect. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you for that little demonstration, I appreciate it. So, just a reminder, Jay here is the top contributors, t contributor of the wiki. Uh, we now know, and I will make this section into a video so more people, maybe if somebody has the willingness to engage with this more than I do, they will now know how. And I will put that up so everybody can know about how it's done. And credit you for that little demonstration. Thank you very much, Jay, for showing us how to edit the wiki. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Maybe give me a chance to uh, talk to... There's a fan in Discord. I'll see if I can get somebody to comment on that yeah. atrocious editing. Sure, sure, um, sure, sure, sure. It might be that we're just using the templates in a way that they weren't meant to be used, but that, that I mean, that looked horrible, right? The the editing screen that shows the one line of the text box, that's 
And no, no wonder, as I said, nobody edits the wiki. I, I would not use that either. Yeah. Uh, I will. I'm writing that down. Why is this so bad, um, especially for a <laughs> million dollar company? Oh, uh, Gluto. Most technical incompetence could be a net positive here. I could not agree yeah. more. <laughs> exactly. I mean, getting somebody who, I'm not, this isn't an insult, but doesn't know anything about the product you're using is always the first step before you release something. Right? Yes. Could an average person or even an above average person make use of this without deep technical knowledge? Yes. And the answer empirically here is no. So uh, something needs to be done about that. Right. I think we are sort of nearing the latter end of the conversation. And what I like to do in pretty much every conversation, barring a handful few, is get a question from what I can gather from studying your persona online, from seeing what I can find about you online, I'm perusing the deep internet, going back to the archives and trying to find something that I can ask you about. A difficult question, put you on the spot and see if I can give you the chance to get ahead of it if it is something that needs such uh, an activity done to it. And for you, Jay, I have remarkably been inefficient and unable to find anything of substance until, until I got an anonymous tip. I can't say who told me about that. But here is your question. Are you ready for this? I promise. I after this, I we, will do, we will do fun stuff after this. <laughs> Hit me. Nothing I say right. here can be considered legally binding or used against me. In law, <laughs> it's right? too late for that. You have waived your right by deciding to be here. <laughs> right. From what I understand, the anonymous tip has mentioned a, an episode where you had accounts banned. Something happened in the background that has led to you not being able to access your accounts online. And yet, we don't know much about that, the circumstances behind it. What we know for a fact is that you are still playing. You're still one of the top contributors online for free to the Dofus um, content for people to find online. What can you tell us about that episode in as much detail as you fancy? And then the motivation behind, behind returning despite that episode and continuing and being the top performer online, con net contributor to knowledge out there in English. I think that, uh, that kind of hagiography minimizes your own contributions and those of many others, but I will take the compliment regardless. So in as much detail as possible is maybe a sort of a gotcha, because I could complain about this at length and for many hours. But the gist of it is that, it, I guess, some backstory. Several years ago, it used to be the case that you could delete a character, make a new one on your account, level it with times four experience, and then do all the achievements in the game and receive those resources again, right? Mm. And so I don't know if you remember this uh, tweet from Jeremy Sadi where he was saying he did exactly that. When Cat's Eye came out, the dice were very expensive because yeah. nobody really knew how to do it. There was an auto-win strategy with three specific characters. I think one was a fog or not. And he just created that same team over again to do the uh, auto-win strategy, full achievements over and over again, generated a ton of dice. And it took, mm -hmm. you know, it was able to do it very quickly because of the times four experience. Mm -hmm. and was able to use the same characters over and over. So that's why they made that change, not him specifically. But people were doing that. They were generating a large number of resources because they could use the same characters and accounts indefinitely to generate mm -hmm. resources. So nowadays, there are account-bound achievements, yes. which means you can only get the resources from them once per achievement once. or once per care account. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, or all the boss achievements, fall under those categories. Yes. So if you want to make a new character... For a new team, for instance, if you were practicing, if you were expecting to create characters on Shadow and you wanted to practice them first on a classic server, you might be tempted to make new accounts so that you could do the content uh, on a fresh, a fresh account where you could get mm -hmm. the resources again. Because otherwise, you're doing a bunch of stuff that would get you commas and resources normally, but they don't because you're on an existing account that's already done those. So yeah. you get nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I did that once myself. I made a, a mini team, quote unquote, and I read it all the Dofus quests after I had quit and sold all my stuff and I didn't have it anymore. So I read it all the Dofus and I got nothing from the dungeons. Yeah. Uh, the Dofus themselves, you get uh, indefinitely. Yeah. But I didn't get any resources from doing those dungeons again. So yeah. I learned my lesson there. If you want to do a bunch of content again, for whatever reason, make a Elite. new account. Mm. So, mm. <laughs> however, uh, if you do that too many times, what I was doing is I made accounts for a new craw team and a new achievement team that I was hoping to someday do on Shadow. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're aware of the, the classic craw team. I don't know if it's still the meta, but people do six craws, one NU and one any. Yes. Right? For buffs I was and personally AP. inspired by Last Baruder. I don't know if yes. you're familiar with him. Yeah, yeah. He did that last... on Shadow. <laughs> yeah, he did a he had a craw team. He farmed a lot of stuff, made a lot of combos, and more importantly, more impressively to me, he did the ice dofas with the craw team. So he defeated Count with just six craws and NU and an any. So no protection, just a bunch of damage and one healer. And I was wow. impressed. I didn't know if mm. I could do that. So I, I figured, let me make some accounts to someday level them on a classic server, try things out first before I do them on Shadow, because that has been my my watchword, if you will. My go-to is to practice things on a classic server first. Fair enough. Um, the way you make a new account is you go to the office.com, right? And you can create new accounts. You have to use an email these days. You can no longer create just an account with a user ID or username. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can use the same email account by ha having an email alias. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You probably most people who have multi accounts. But if you have a Gmail account and you add like a plus and then something yes. else to the end of the account, plus it goes to dot. the same account. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, plus or dot. Yeah. But it's considered the same one. Yeah. And so you can use the same email over and over again if you want. So what I did is I went to the website, I created these new accounts for my eventual craw team. And you can make two accounts per day on the Dofus website. After that, you get a Cloudflare limitation where it says you can't create any more accounts, right? Your okay. IP address is dead. <laughs> wow. So you may be able you may be able to reset your IP address or whatever. You reset your router, get a new, I don't know, any of that. I just limited myself to two per day. Mm -hmm. That's what the, uh, what the website wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Then, this is in January. It was January 23rd. I was farming arch monsters on Shadow. I had finished Crimson, Turquoise, and Emerald. I was going for Ochre. Four out of six. So just running around in Banta pasture, looking for arch monsters to farm, or to capture, and then get the divine tingies and everything. And suddenly, mm. all my accounts start getting logged out. And so that's not that's not unusual. I was perfectly fine with it because I wasn't in a, a fight at the time. I was just running around. It happens all the time, right? A desync or whatever desync with the server. You just mm -hmm. log back in. You don't worry about it. But I saw a bit of an unexpected message, which was, uh, your account has been permanently banned. <laughs> so that was a little bit uh, different than the usual desync I'm used to seeing and quite yeah. concerning to yeah. me, I will say. And it happened uh, first on four accounts. And I was like, well, is that it? Uh, but then the other four joined shortly afterwards. And every account that I tried subsequently was permanently banned. I could not log into any of them. So the first thing I did, obviously, was go to Reddit and make a post complaining about it. Like, hey, I just got banned live because um, I had been recording it because I record all my shadow gameplay in case a really bad bug happens. I can maybe have a chance to get my stuff back, although I consider it extremely unlikely. Yeah. But since I was recording it, I thought it would might be interesting to see people, uh, you know, how often do you to visualize that sort of thing? But the second thing, actually, that's the second thing I did. The first thing I did was open a support ticket and say, excuse me, I can't help but notice that all my accounts are banned. Could you explain <laughs> what happened? Uh, Very why was polite. The case? <laughs> I did. Uh, at the beginning, I tried to be as polite as possible because there yeah. was nothing to be gained from rudeness, right? And Kama yeah. has all the power in this situation. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I groveled, but there's no harm in it, um, mm -hmm. is what I will say. Mm -hmm. So I got the answer back that they had detected, I think they said a bot, botting or anomalous activity or whatever, and that I was permanently banned. Ooh. And uh, they banned all the accounts associated with my email that I use for all my accounts. Of course, I use the same one because I don't bother maintaining 60, not 60, I don't have 60 accounts, uh, 20 different email accounts. I just use, as I mentioned, a lot of them are from before the email change. So they just have their unique uh, user names and they all link to the same uh, email account. Some of them have the aliases or whatever. The uh -huh. point is they're all on the same account, uh, email account. And what I got back eventually after some back and forth, Back and forth was that I had created accounts automatedly. The automated creation of accounts is what I was permanently banned for on all my accounts linked to that email address. Um, so while I cannot prove this, my description that I just uh, said to you is how it went down. I hope you believe me about that. Um, I did not create accounts automatically, uh, automatedly in any sort of automatic fashion. I, I respected the two per day. I uh -huh. gave them all this information, right? I told the support person, here are all the accounts I have. I listed every account that I had made uh, uh -huh. that I had at the time, and then also the 12 new ones I made. And it went pretty in depth what each one was for, when I made them, why I made them, all the new practice, the accounts I made to hopefully practice for Shadow. I had mm. created one account or one character on each account that was named Shadow Practice 1, 2, 3, whatever. <laughs> I was hoping that would communicate my intent. I told them that, and I was like, well, it's pretty it's obvious. This thing wishes not... you from bots if you have a structure to the names and everything. <laughs> that was my hope, yeah. 
Um, but the response back was, <laughs> we have investigated this thoroughly, and yeah. we're not going to go back. If you bring it up, we will uh, close your ticket and spit on your grave, is what he said, verbatim. <laughs> the shadow... Um, no, no, verbatim, okay. What? Yeah, what? Not... not <laughs> not verbatim, but he did say, uh, do not bother. We, we've investigated this. We made our decision. Don't bother opening a new ticket. We'll just close it again. Off with you. So, <laughs> that was the end of it. Um, I was done with Dopus. So yeah. after that, I made a second post on Reddit. I was like, I was, I was salty, I will say, right? That's what the kids say. I was very angry because I had yeah. put a lot of time into this game and then been banned for something I didn't do uh, with yeah. very little respect from anyone. And so yeah. I, I made a, a post being like, apparently you can be banned for creating accounts now, very passive aggressive. Uh... Um, yeah. And so I didn't get as much, I, I got some support on that one. And uh, some other people decided I was a comma seller, which was not as fun. Um, but it's, it's understandable, right? I would I think I, I remember like this live... post. Oh my God. It, was it on Reddit? Yeah, it was under my old account, which I, oh, I remember it vividly. There were a couple of people, I think Golden Spirit did comment on that one because everything that you mentioned is largely indistinguishable from someone who makes a lot of accounts to generate commas and then sell them. Little did they know that you're a different type of freak that we're getting to know about today. <laughs> yeah, in a sense, I was flattered because we're like, this guy has 40 accounts and he spent 20,000 hours in the game. He must be yeah. a huge, he must make tons of money and be a big botter. I was like, no, I'm just a loser. <laughs> I just spent all my time on this game because I, I suck as a person. Um, but they, they gave me the better interpretation, I guess, of those facts, which wow. I appreciate. Yeah. It's also it's understandable, right? I would say the majority of people who were banned were banned for a good reason. Yeah. And the majority of people who say I was banned for no reason uh, were not banned for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> so it's statistically speaking, they were correct, right? Uh, the odds were against me. Yeah. It's also you want you would want to live in a, a world where they don't ban people for no reason, right? That it's only yeah. correct cases. There's no yeah. false positives. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So that happened in January, January twenty third, and then. Well, I mean, it couldn't log into the game, right? Every single one of my accounts was under that email and therefore mm. banned. But I couldn't even get into the launcher. Um, basically, the end for me. So I just tried to start moving on and uh, away from Dofus. I actually, I started playing Elden Ring, which I had bought okay. a while ago, but never found the time time to play because, you know, Dofus takes up a lot of your time. It's a full-time um, job. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. so one thing Gluta says. Here, yeah. Here um, so yeah, I beat Elden Ring on game. I liked it a lot. Let's then, go. It, I was, you know, I it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but a lot of my life was tied up in Dofus. I was not entirely sure where to go from there. I had had I had a lot of plans, especially on Shadow. Yeah. I'd just come back and done a lot of, yeah, Gluto, you were another one who called me a comma seller. Um, but that's fine. <laughs> Hold on. Do you want to apologize now, Gluto? Do we, do we believe Jay first of all? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Let me finish my story first before <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Let's get um, all the no, facts first. No, no forgiveness <laughs> is necessary. I don't blame anybody. It's true that many of the facts I presented were one-sided. There was no way to verify them and made me look pretty suspicious. So yeah, yeah. No, it's all water under the bridge. Yeah. Kudos um, to you for putting them out there while knowing that they would look a certain way. As I said, indistinguishable from someone who does bot-in activities or camera activities. Because nobody be is... <laughs> I don't have 48 accounts. I can't fathom having 60 accounts. It's just way beyond the reasonable. <laughs> anyway. To be yeah. honest, that's just how I played for so long mm. that I thought it was entirely uh, above board. I didn't think anybody would interpret that poorly. So I was very yeah. surprised to, to see that. I was like, that, that's just how I play the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that, um, that's very unorthodox. <laughs> yeah. I'm still yeah. waiting for my turn, Gluta. I've not yet been false <laughs> positive banned, but I'm, I'm holding hope. <laughs> Right. Um, I forget where I was in my story, but I think, right, I was trying to move on from Dofus. I had yeah. had a lot of projects that I wasn't going to be able to complete. Mm. Uh, it was kind of bumming me out. So it took me a while to move on, but I was ready. And by March, March 1st or 2nd or whatever, I was almost completely done. I deleted my Reddit account. I shut down my Twitter account. I uh, del deleted all the Dofus stuff on my computer, mm. which caused me other problems I might get into. And I was logging into my Dofus email to yeah. delete that account as well and finally finish everything off when I saw an email message from Ankama saying, hey, your Wakfu subscription has run out. And, uh, you still have a Wakfu account. <laughs> what? I, I mean, I, I have, yeah, my accounts for Wakfu are still around, but it was weird yeah. to me because I haven't played that game in six or seven years. I'm were... certainly not subscribed to it because it's a separate subscription from Dofus. That's weird. 
the plot thickens. So, right. So what I the first thing I did was I was curious. I was like, did they? There was. I assumed at first that there had been some sort of bug on Wafu, and they gave every account um, free like compensation type. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but they don't do yeah. that all that often on Dofus, but on Wafu maybe it's more common. So okay. I went to the I went to the Wafu website, whatever, and I logged in. I was like, let me see what, what's going on. And when I logged in, I noticed that I was able to log in, which is bizarre because when you're permanently banned, the login is what fails. You you can't log in. It tells you you're permanently banned. No login yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. So was kind of surprised to see that, and I was able to also log in on several other accounts. And I re-downloaded the launcher, and I was able to get into the game as well. So uh, kind of kind of surprised to see that. I got no indication from Ankama <laughs> that I would be able to log in for you know legitimate reasons uh -huh. so my the assumption i made at that point was that they had had something where they gave everybody walk through subscription time mm. and that inadvertently unbanned my accounts uh so that's no not something you would expect to have happen is that um, what actually it is, happened it was the it was the the best guess i could make with the information that i had which was no communication from Ankama, unbanned free subscription time on watch food um, so for a while, I just kind of slowly started playing the game again, being like, well, if you let me in, I guess I'll keep playing. Um, <laughs> would like to finish those ochres, for one. I, had, I, had, <laughs> I was like 90% done with the ochres. I had seven complete sets. I was working on the eighth. Um, so I wanted to get those ochres. Like, let me just sneak in there and maybe they won't notice. <laughs> <What> the <laughs> I'll just quickly so get to... this done. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I also, I mean, I put a bunch of stuff on some other accounts, right? I put things in a house in Astro that should be accessible even from a random FTP account. Yeah. So I know, right? Poking the bear. Um, I was trying to He's keep a low profile. He's too famous now. It's too late. He's too famous. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to keep a low profile just in case they were going to find me again and ban me again. Um, I didn't want to reach out. I didn't want to reach out and ask. I figured there was a pretty low chance they'd be like, yep, we changed our minds. You're completely unbanned. It's all good. And a non-zero chance they'd be like, oh, that's our bad. We actually yeah, yeah, hold on. Yeah, come back. You. Yep. So, uh, wow. Thanks for pointing that out. You're banned again. That um, is incredible. <laughs> wow. But after what? about a month or so of that, um, you know, it was, it was kind of a, a limbo situation I didn't enjoy being in. I wanted to know for sure, right? Having really? the, the sword of Damocles over you all the time, it, it, it wears on you. So while I was preparing some stuff to be like, to, to, you know, send them information, I went on my accounts. I logged into the Uncama account thing, and it shows you all your subscriptions. And one thing <laughs> I noticed is I've been credited for 58 days of subscription time. Is that how long nowhere. you've been banned? No, I was actually only banned for a little over a month. Okay. A little under, yeah, a little over a month, like five weeks. So I got a little bit extra subscription time on some accounts. On the other accounts, it was just what? like 36 days, which I think is the actual account, actual amount. So hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, if I got it correctly, that... they banned you. Then they've accidentally credited you extra days and unbanned you without telling you. Is that right? Did you get a net positive from this whole experience? <laughs> I think overall it works out to a little bit of extra time, although there's, there are some caveats. But I did, when I saw that subscription time, I thought, okay, this must be uh, like a, a compensation for an inadvertent ban. So I, I reached out, I made a new support ticket. I was like, hey, like, are we cool? <laughs> Am I officially unbanned now? And they said, uh, yep, we changed our minds. You're unbanned. Feel free to play again. That was the end of that. Um, I got what? a little bit of subscription time back for the time I couldn't <laughs> play, the five weeks. Uh, and they just change their minds. What? Without, without even noticing you or notifying you or anything? Yep, they didn't send me a single email or anything. So what the absolute what? <laughs> that is incredible. It's uh, very strange. I, I mean, I, in a sense, I'm lucky because I think a lot of people who are permanently banned never have somebody come back five weeks later and unban them. It's in the name. Um, exactly, right? Permanently. You yeah. think would imply a large amount of time um, yeah, yeah, have you found my... Uh, yes, we have found, found it. My... I, I correctly remember Golden Spirit leading the charge because of how much he hates voters and camera sellers. He just went ballistic on you. <laughs> I'm going to show yeah, him this in, clip. Uh, a couple hours later, and there were like 50 comments be like, oh, well, for this camera seller. Yeah, and Glute is coming to your help there. Considering they deleted, no, I, I, I think. think he is. <laughs> oh, no, he's not coming to your help. Just, uh, he's handing Golden Spirit the, the chair, the <laughs> holding chair. 
they don't think anybody creates 12 accounts just to practice on. And I can tell you guys right now, in all honesty, if you don't believe that still, and you're well within your rights not to believe that, please tune in to Jay's next stream when he's doing something on Shadow, like an important quest fight or something, and see the prep that goes into it, the number of accounts he will log to try and get it right, practice and see how it works really, before doing it where death is permanent on the Shadow server. I need a moment fact, to recover uh, from this. I, I got more than I bargained for here, Jay. <laughs> I, need, I need to pour me a whiskey. Sorry, one second. <laughs> Please do care. I was going to oh, say, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's 12 accounts that I got banned for creating, the uh, the craw team and the achievement team, I didn't use Yeah. until recently when I started using the achievement team accounts for real because I was afraid of getting banned again. But I have been using those the past couple of days. I'm leveling them on Talkasha and also on Shadow because I will be making an achievement team in the near future. And that is what I created them for, to practice on Talkasha. Nice. Sorry, I just need to ban that comment. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for asking, Panzer. If you stay tuned until the end, um, any podcast episode you will have seen, if you haven't seen anyone, I'm telling you what the structure will be like. At the end, Jay will have the floor completely to himself for as long as he needs to promote his work, where you can find him, share the links. So this is also a platform, not only where we get to know more about the content creator, but we also get to see their work and be pointed in the right direction should we decide to give them a hand later on and show them some support. And I definitely will be on board with that if I'm not already on both of that <laughs> if you see what i mean yeah i shall be right back in a very quick second just grabbing a bottle of whiskey and continuing because i'm loving where this is going <laughs> but we'll say for anyone who's interested i put the link in the chat of the uh the post i made when i was unbanned or when i it was confirmed that i was unbanned where i heard back from Ankama a little bit surprisingly certainly was a surprise to me since they you know, didn't tell me anything that is incredible they don't they don't tend to revert that decision in particular. The ban is usually one they don't take lightly, but... What's, what's especially surprising to me is that I was about to quit forever. I mean, maybe I should have. We can get into that. But I would not have noticed were it not for the three days of walk food expiring just before I checked my email. Incredible. Uh, that was, uh, what a story. Kind of lucky. Imagine Which, all the another... content you've created recently. We would have missed out on that if you didn't read that one email. Poof. <laughs> carry on carry on there's another oh yeah i was gonna say so the timing works out luckily in that case because i um happened to notice the email before i quit forever but mm -hmm. uh one of the the way the timing works against me is i think i mentioned that i do the almanacs a lot right so yes. I, I do it for commas on a lot of characters yeah and i also have my main account my main characters on talkasha where one of my random small goals was to complete every Almanac's quest. There's around 375-ish, 380. And it can be tricky to get all of them, but one of my goals was to do that. And uh, it took a long time, but I did finally, I went through all my accounts, I crossed out every single one I'd done, and I had a list of the ones I needed to finish, and I actually posted it on Twitter. Um, many of them were near the end of the year. But yeah, I was, I knew the ones I needed to do, and I had done every single one except one Almanac's quest. I had one Almanac's quest left to complete every single Almanac's quest. It was the one on February 29th, which comes around once every four years. I had never been playing during one oh. of those leap years. Oh. And I was I was banned on January 23rd, and I was unbanned on February 26th or 27th, I think, but I didn't know about it until March. No. So I missed 9th, and I will never have 100% Almanac's completion on my main no. characters. No. because of that, so that uh, <laughs> that's the real me. tragedy <laughs> a little bit yeah i know it's it's minor compared to the the five five weeks off but that's yeah it's the small things that get you right jesus christ yeah it, well if yeah. you are at that level of uh, being specific and careful and thoughtful about what you do in the game that will get to you for sure i just wanted to show this to people who um were a bit incredulous as to the number of accounts that jay runs and again, tune into one of his streams and watch his routine, his Almanac's routine. And I kid you not, takes hours, <laughs> hours of prep, hours of actually doing. Here's why. This is one account. This is his main account. How many characters does it have? <laughs> it's going to have list. 15 accounts, right? Five on yeah. Shadow, five on Tokasha, five and on he's Dragon got eight Death. of them. <laughs> he's got eight of those. I actually have uh, 16 subscribed accounts. 
keeps getting better. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Can you please warn me so I don't spit my drink if I'm drinking? <laughs> when you say something like that. <laughs> So actually, the Dragon Eris ones I made, uh, I think in December, I was going to do, I was going to do the Almanacs on Dragon Eros on five characters on each account. And that was going to be a huge comma windfall. It was going to take a very long time, but I was motivated. I stopped doing that shortly before, or shortly after I came back from the ban. I was like, I, it looks too suspicious, right? Um, the it, Doing it on normal servers, that's fine. Wow. This logging in and out every single character all the time. I don't want to be associated with that in case they see it and they're like, okay, banned again. Um, <laughs> so I stopped doing it on Dragon Eros. I only do it on one character now to check if there's any sort of insta-kill oh. for Shadow. Uh, nice. That's my limit. Also, yeah. to be honest, it was too long. <laughs> it was like two hours. Um, yeah. I'm fine with doing Almanacs normally on the uh, the characters I have on Classic and Shadow because, you know, it's just it's completely mindless. I do a watching a stream, your stream, someone else's stream. We're listening to a podcast, Netflix, watching a TV whatever, show or whatever. Yeah. Netflix, exactly. It's, you don't even notice it after a while. But Dragon Eros, it's a lot more intensive because you're doing one at a time instead of eight at a time. Um, yeah, I'm kind of glad. I'm not glad I got banned, uh, but I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. It's incredible. Uh, it's, it's not worth the comments. It's also so much setup. You yeah. can't trade. You can't log two accounts at the same time to trade between them. So you got to yeah. use the chest. It's the house chest. It, it's the <laughs> timer. You can't use the haven bag, which is more instant. That is just mind blowing. And I think huge. Hey, long time no see. He's on the jokes. He's our in-house jokester. One of many. He's saying that you are not playing the game. You're a priest on a pilgrimage praying to God on 400 <laughs> accounts. <laughs> Well, it seems to have been working. It seems to have worked because I did get a miracle, right? Getting unbanned. What? <laughs> Holy shit, that is so true. Holy shit. So you must have been completely miffed with the change to the almanacs given how many cameras you were generating. All of a sudden, you can't get that many anymore, right? Uh, that is true, yeah. The nerf was pretty harsh. I would say it used to be 40,000 was the most you could get. Now it's 20,000. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm, I'm good on commas now, I would say. I did spend, uh, after I team wiped on Shadow the first time, I wanted to build up some commas so I got a better mm. gear and not die as easily. Yeah. And one of the things I did was create all those Almanax characters on Shadow. Mm. It's free money. It's completely risk-free. I made about, I want to say, 150 million commas in a year Ooh. or two years. Nice. And that's what I was starting with when I went back to the server for the second time. Uh, but these days, I'm okay. I'm good on commas. I don't really need them all that much. Uh, it's mostly for Shadow. You get the you know, Almokens, which you can use to buy pebbles. Yeah. And so that those those are pretty expensive on Shadow, unlike classic servers. And I'm mm. also around 300 days deep on Dolmanaxes on most of my oh. characters. So that oh. hopefully be a windfall. Although they're going to become unlinked after Unity comes out. So what? how much I'll actually be able to realize in terms wait, of wait, wait. when everyone quits. How many Dolmanaxes are you going to generate when you finish them all? In 65 uh, days? 120. Oh my god, yeah, losing so my shit. Day... I can't take it anymore. <laughs> These numbers are. Do you guys still think this is a bot? <laughs> do you I mean, think honestly, he sells cows? Like <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there were Almanac bots. <laughs> 20 Dominic. Like, you can start a server on your own. <laughs> You've got enough to gear 100. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, did. I forgot to run you through the capture to de to detect whether you were human before we start. I'll <laughs> add that to future podcast because this is unreal. I think um, it's not the whiskey; it's Jay. <laughs> I was actually I don't know if you're going to be streaming after this, but I was planning to uh, stream my Almanac preparation for next month, which is what <laughs> yeah. I usually do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Even though it's not particularly interesting, some people might want to see what it takes. <laughs> mm. To, I'm uh, not entirely sure what the plan Almanac is players. afterwards, but I'm, I'm I'm not entirely sure. But I, I did have the idea to tell you earlier that if I because I wasn't feeling well, a bit under the weather, I've had a fantastically packed first week after I came back from holiday. I quit my job and I'm already preparing to become a full time content creator. And it's too much. I'm doing too much again. Sure, you got a lot going on, yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to say if you started your stream immediately after we finish, while I have just chatting with the with with guys and just sort of mellow it down, I could raid you then, so we can actually see the actual bot in action. <laughs> but I, I'll see. I'll see how it goes. <laughs> Watch a man trade resources between accounts for three hours. Seven hours. <laughs> That's how long it takes. <laughs> you have yeah, told us. Unfortunately. Hold on, hold on. You told us a fantastic amount about... Or did you have something to add about that point in particular? 
I was just going to say, as I mentioned earlier, it kind of sucks <laughs> that all the... I'm not going to get the Almanaxes for another two or three months on most characters. And then four months after that, they're unlinked. And that's going to be after the release of Unity. So I, I assume the prices are going to go... Uh, they're not going No one's going to be playing the old servers for quite a while. So I'm not sure how much commas I'll actually be able to realize from any of those uh, Dolmanaxes if I choose to sell them. So a little bit unfortunate, but whatever. I, have, I, I, can't I have this fleet in memory of watching you in one of your many streams because I usually put you on the second screen while I'm doing after stream prep before I go to sleep so I keep you on the other side and every now and then look if you say something funny or whatever is happening there I think I have had a fleeting memory of seeing about 600 million commas in one of your haven bags is that true? So when I started uh, streaming I had 600 million commas on shadow from selling oh, my good. 8 turquoise dofuses that's they're about they were around 90 to 100 million commas each I made like what? 700. Well, I made around 600 because I, I, I accepted resources. Yeah. <laughs> you are dangerous. You have 600 million camera and about to come into 120 dollar axes. You need to be uh, banned so again. I've, ASAP. I've spent, I've spent so much commas from uh, for, on Shadow because uh, I need a lot of gear. I need, I guess that's a big thing is gear. Also, a subscription for all these yeah. accounts is not cheap. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going back on the chat right now and I've seen something uh, that I didn't address earlier from Shadow. Uh, he's saying, I'm not a big fan of the Almanac's comma changes, to be honest. And I have studied those pretty closely because I've translated the live. And this has become one of my ways of getting information firsthand and knowing about the change. One of the things they did mention about the cha the changes in the commas is that while on the surface of it, it looks like they've halved the payout. The max was 40, now it's 20 to 22, 50%. Oh no, it's the end of the world. But in the way they've designed the changes, they've made it so that you have more high comma days to compensate for this change. If you work it out overall, if you add all the commas from the previous version, all the commas from the current version, it works out to about 30% less. Not as dramatic as 50, but still a reduction nonetheless, which means Jay will not have seen a, a big, as big a dent to his uh, money, money, as we thought. <laughs> He's doing fine. That is true. However, one thing to take into account is about Shadow, many of the high-level resources that are in demand for the higher comma days are very yeah. expensive. Oh, uh, so a lot of them aren't worth it. For instance, one of the yeah, ones that's yeah, coming yeah. up next month or the month after is Sterile Soil. Oh. I believe uh, the offering is two of those, and you yeah. get 20,000 commas for that. Uh -huh. On, on Tokasha, that's very cheap. What do you get them? On... Sterile Soil is from the Misery mobs, I believe, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you're spending more than 20k to get that 20k, which isn't worth it. And, or risk death in the Misery area. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like uh, thirty. It's like thirty thousand commas per item, so it's not. I'd be oof. losing money the more I did it. And net, oof! If you do that on hundred and twenty characters like he does, <laughs> I don't know why you would do that. Right, quick one, exactly. Jay, because I'm seeing a lot of traction. People asking, they're so intrigued by your unhuman, uh, borderline cyborg playstyle that they want to know your stream link now before we get to the promotion uh bit do you want to share your link please for us <laughs> i will i'll uh, me uh, it's in the chat or something yes um I, i'm gonna say one Great. thing to chat please if you can think of memes i have a couple of memes already on the list that i'm working on a couple of ideas like uh uh, we know that he's a mathematician, he's majored in math, and one of his catchphrases are uh, is, as a math major, and then he will say something obvious, yes, two is bigger than one, so that's something I'm working with, but if you pick up on anything from this conversation, please let me know, I'm dying to add one or two memes to the international pub. <laughs> oh, remarkable. There's a uh, couple wait, of... You don't... Go on. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if you don't mind talking a little bit more about the Almanacs, uh, another change they made on. Yeah. is they increase the number of resources on a lot of days. So you get less effective commas because you got to spend for those resources. So I'm seeing, uh, I, don't have, I didn't write down everything, but empirically there are many days these days where it's just not worth it in terms yeah. of commas. Um, on Shadow, you can uh, get a little bit of commas because if you, the pebbles are more expensive, right? So if you get like a fifth of a pebble, on a level oh. 200 character, yeah, exactly. You can buy the pebble, and it's like 70 to 100 a thousand, depending on the economy at the time. So you can, mm. you can, it's even the ones that aren't explicitly worth it. You can make up some of the commas from the pebbles, but in general, it was a nerf, I would say. Yeah. 
Yeah, I that's, haven't. That's, I'm, I'm done with all my next stuff there. <laughs> the... Oh, the other thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One last thing. Yeah. I was going to say that if you were if you were hoping to see fun Almanacs gameplay, I usually don't stream that because I want to be able to do other stuff while I'm Almanacsing. Otherwise, it's so boring. I would never been never have been able to do it. Um, but if people were interested in seeing that, I would be fine with streaming it. I at the beginning when I came back, I was like, I'm going to stream 100% of my gameplay to avoid getting banned. That was another impetus behind me streaming. Uh, and then nobody was showing up and sitting there for an hour and a half doing almanacs while I can't like watch a video or anything because I'm on stream, um, it's pretty tedious. <laughs> yeah, I think from now on you have found your audience. I think <laughs> you, you will never walk alone, as they say in Liverpool. You will never almanac alone is your new slogan. <laughs> I mean, if people want to, the other issue there is it's going to be you know, two in the morning for most of y'all. So if, if that's something you want to stay up for, is watching me do almanacs on all my characters. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not going to stand in the way of that. Uh, there's no supply issue, but I would not be shocked to find there was a demand issue. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah, there's two things I picked up on. I'm, I mean, chat is moving faster than I can handle it nowadays. I'm getting old. The first one is saying the joke is most people are 70% water. J is 70% binary code. <laughs> Or 70% Dofus accounts. The other one is, if you want to be notified of any high camera days, this is for you as well, Jay, so you can sort of elevate the way you handle things by automating some of them. You, the, Gluto has devised the bot, and now let me swap back and show. This is the international pub for people who haven't joined. This is the absolute best, most vibrant and active English speaking community on Discord. We have tools, we have crazy things happening, which I will bring to light now that I've ordered the green screen. Right, I will be making ads for those. But the topic of today that Gluto has just mentioned now is he's testing this and he's going to release it soon. If anybody wants to join the test phase, please let me know and you can just react to a sort of message. Where is it? I can't find it. Almanax testing. Yeah. This is it. So, it's called the dude, the Almanax dude. So, this is a really cool dude that lets you uh, ask him about a specific type of echo craft that you like. Do you like the high cameras one? Do you like the echo one you can save uh, resources? Do you like breathing ones? Do you like dream related ones? So, he lets you uh, earmark a type of Almanac days, uh, let's call them an effect. And then it also lets you customize the reminder. You can tell him, remind me seven days before a high camera one, and then one day again after. This is for you, Jay. Uh, Jay. So you can be notified via ping when high camera days are coming. So you can prepare for them thoroughly if you want. And this is on top of the Almanac's daily bot that we have that tells you the rewards, how many Almokens you get in great detail. And you can also, this anybody can use this. As long as you are in the server, you should be able to use this for free. No, no roles or anything attached to it. You can put Almanac's and then monthly or weekly and you can get a list of all of them without having to go to a website sorry about that without having to go to a website or trying to fiddle with excel sheets you can have them all listed right here in front of you in one place that is pretty cool as a non-web dev i've always been very impressed by uh, gluto's <laughs> various bots i watched the yes. podcast with him it was very yeah very so, cool to see that side of thing uh, just personally to... i use the wiki um, but this does look like an interesting solution Yep, and then you can see the next page and the next page and you have them all in one place. The idea that I've had for the international pub since I've started it and got serious about it with the help of Gluto who makes the tools. I've got loads of ideas but I don't know how to concretize them, if that, if that is even a word in English, concretize it, to make them happen. But he has the know-how to just bring them in like a couple of hours, boom, here's this thing that can do this and this and this and that. Anybody that's curious about the tools that we have before I start making ads for them, there is a video that, Gluto, would you mind linking the podcast episode with yourself? I've listened to it just the other day while driving, and it's just hilarious. <laughs> All the tools he made, and especially why. This complex tool that he's made, and you ask him, so why did you make this? And I was like, I don't know, I just thought it would be cool. <laughs> That's it. Spent countless hours on something that is incredibly cool that we get to toy around with. So that concludes our section on the, the little diversion. Sorry about that, Jay. It was in the spirit of things.
I still rem do you still have anything to add about the almanacs, the bands, the accounts that you use, things like that, as part of the difficult question that I ask every guest? Uh, I mean, there's not much to say. I Every month, right, I prepare all the resources for the upcoming month, at least all the ones that are profitable, trade them between all my characters. Mm. Um, I do, on my main eight on Okasha, I only do the high value days because they almost all those characters already have the Dolmanax and yeah. the pebbles aren't worth anything. So those ones, that's why it's not 160. <laughs> nice. uh, those ones are only doing the high value days. Nice. Um, I'm yeah, conscious a, that you've answered. The tool. Go on, sorry. I was going to say there's another thing about the Almanacs, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to pull up the wiki page for the Almanacs. Let's do it. Wiki. This is going to be a little bit of a story. I apologize. People don't wiki. care about the uh, Almanacs. This is what... Almanacs. No, no, no. Absolutely not. This is... The whole idea of this podcast is to find out things that we didn't know about. <laughs> so I'm pleasantly surprised and continue to be pleasantly surprised. So here we go. Here we go. Uh, so this is the uh, the Almanac's offerings page. It has a list of all the offerings for every single day, mm -hmm. as well as the required items and the commas Comma and value. the bonuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing, if you'll see, if you kind of look at what's what it says in the bonuses, uh, you'll notice we have... It has the type or the maybe the category there, like plenty of wood, loot, uh -huh. mount breeding. And then it has, in parentheses, a little bit of an explanation of what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. The effect you get. And so you'll notice that that is not how it's said in game, right? For instance, loot, it usually says increased chance to drop things in the Kenegrula's Cave Dungeon. Yeah, yeah, Here it yeah. Says no plus details. Plus 100% drop. Uh-huh. Um, and so... One of my goals in January, very shortly before I was banned, was to update this page because it used to be entirely out of date. It didn't have any of the new... Like, they've been changing it as they remove, add and remove monsters and update things. It didn't have the new Pandala stuff. All the uh -huh. commas were out of date, all the bonuses. Uh, I didn't handle the various... Like, there's a daily Almanax quest, and then there are a variety of festivals or special quests that come in and replace the days. If you look, uh, the 13th there in your list, Fitzef, if you go over the little asterisk next to the name, it should tell you what it's replacing, I think. I have no idea what the... Um, Edixo or something the, like that. Yeah, Edixo. Oh, that was the old one. Uh, yeah, so that was the... That's the daily. Edixo is the daily thing for the 13th. And then there's a festival, the carnival, that is uh, replacing it in this year. So that that's a, a little bit of a, a tricky thing to handle. But Holy shit. Back, back to my story. This used to be completely out of date. One of my mm. goals was to update this. Uh -huh. um, and I worked on this in January. As I mentioned, since the format is a little bit different, it's not exactly the uh, the description that it uses in game. It's got a bunch. It's processed like plus fifty percent drops against fungi instead of saying uh, experience increased. gained by mm. fighting monsters in the fungi family is increased by fifty percent or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, un yeah. unnecessarily yeah. verbose, I guess, mm. uh, is what this, that was the style before I started updating this. So I wanted to match it. And the problem is that. <laughs> it's, it doesn't match the description, so it has to be created from something. And in game, there's uh, I know this from my data miner friend, it's not me. Yeah. Um, there's both the description, <laughs> which is written out, and then there is like uh, data there, right? So there's for for the fungi thing, there's going to be a thing that says this is the monster family ID for fungi. Oh. Then there's a bonus of type experience, and the value is fifty. So then when you reach that day in game, it can like it can I can correctly show you. Uh, the bonus for like an experience preview when you hover over the monster or something I like that see. or a drop bonus when you look mm -hmm. in the best cherry all those things so a lot of these are in two places there's the description as well as the in-game information so uh wow. this the, the way the way this was written it had to be updated by processing the the, the data uh, not just the description so i spent a very long time <laughs> the better part of a week <laughs> writing code uh, to process all that data and generate these wiki formatted descriptions it took what a long time hell? but i finally got it mostly working and then i was banned <laughs> so oh my uh, God, that the was timing. bad timing oh a my month ish God. after i was banned i mentioned earlier i deleted all my dofa stuff and then included the code that i wrote to do this so luckily when i came back i was able to restore from a backup but it was from Let's last go. year so i didn't have this information so i rewrote oh. this code <laughs> a and second time it was just a matter of running it then. You didn't have to do all the work again. Yeah. So I originally was writing it uh, just because, and then in the meantime, they actually yeah. updated the Almanac. They so changed it everything again. To have that code because wow. I would just run it once and have all these bonuses. Uh, Let's all the new go. Stuff. Let's go. And I had to rewrite it. 
So can you confirm to us that this is the most up-to-date one on the wiki? Or sometime this was the most up-to-date thing anywhere because everyone else was using just the descriptions yeah. and a lot of those were incorrectly translated. Like yeah, uh, yeah, next yeah. month, it's Kaoli. It's a 50% bonus to pet experience on the website and in-game it said 200%. Because they just they got the number wrong. Was that your post on Reddit where you've uh, cautioned people against uh, crafting uh, on a specific uh, day because it was... was another one. That was me. Oh, I remember that because someone in the chat, Leo, went ahead to craft all his legendary items. And then after crafting about six or seven, he realized, there are no savings. What is going on? And I had seen your post exactly. on Reddit. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I made a forum Jesus. post, too, being like, this could cause a lot of problems if it's yeah. not fixed. And it was, unfortunately, it was on a Friday evening. I made the post. I pinged them on Twitter. Uh, they didn't get to it. So uh, it did cause problems because it was also a lot of it, it, uh, they'd already started La Pero. It was already done. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I figured the odds were low, but I had to try. I didn't. I didn't yeah. notice it in time. Um, I fixed most of the translation issues on this page, uh -huh. but I, I missed that one. So in a Jesus. sense, it's on me. It's on you. But, uh, we found the culprit. <laughs> the bot right here. Look at him ebbing and flowing, bobbing. <laughs> yeah. Although I mentioned a bunch of other Almanax issues um, yeah. on the forum, and they didn't get to those either. So maybe they wouldn't have done it. Uh, they actually. So Pharaoh. Uh, Fahreo, yes. one of the guys behind Ibu. OPB. I think, I think he's the data miner, maybe, and then uh, Erezi yeah. is the developer, but I don't know exactly what their, uh, their distribution of work is there. Uh -huh. but he, he also mentioned it on the forum, but since he doesn't play in English, he only noticed it on the day of, so uh, a little mm. bit later. I actually replied to him on the French forum before they replied to me on the English forum, yeah. which uh, hurt my feelings a little bit. Uh -huh. I put some effort into it. Um, I went through each French one of these experience. and I compared the English against the French and I had the correct version in there uh, before they did the, did the translation. But I mean, I what know. I'm getting here is that you should start playing your French card more often. You should just whip out that card. Yeah, I mean, if there's something important in the future, I'm going to the French <laughs> forum, right? Nice. But since that one was so specifically in English, right? It's the yeah. English translation of the thing that's wrong. I, it was uh, also yeah, the Spanish sure. and PTBR, by the way. It was all the international yeah, non-French exactly. ones. A quick whip about uh, Pharaoh, the guy who makes uh, Ibu. We've invited him to the Discord and he's part of uh, a special group of bots, testers, devs at the bottom that not many people can see, only people that are part of it. And I'm so looking forward to see what sort of collaborations could come up between Gluto, him, and the other person, uh, Misty, who made us a... Oh, I should mention this, by the way. We have solved the uh, eternal problem that we've had with uh, portal positions every solution that was found in the past relied on like the most famous one i can uh, mention is Talkasha's dimension so people will hunt for it and post when they find it so it was manual entry and in the past there used to be rewards people who did hunt for them would get fifty thousand cameras each and there was a person who <laughs> ran the server and who collected money and that paid out and I did participate in that in the past, but she sadly got banned. It was, uh, uh, I think Huge mentioned it earlier. It was Sunny. She's She was a girl who essentially managed this whole system, but got banned with all the cameras in the game and whatever, whatever. So the incentive okay. disappeared. Well, I've been there. Stay strong. The incentive has disappeared. You don't get paid. So the user input decreased in quality and quantity. But we've solved for that recently with a bot that automatically, I can't say how, but it fetches the information, the most up-to-date one, and puts it in this channel right here. And so before going or trying to hunt for it, give this channel a look, nine times out of 10, you'll find that it's updated. If you don't have access to it while being in the pub, you go to channels and roles and it's portal position here at the top. If for some reason you can't see this, the fantastic Gluto has added an extra convenience where you can just go to extra roles and then grab it from here. As easy as that is the little sun. Just thought I'd put that one out there because it's one of the problems that we've been facing for years and we've only recently found a workable solution that does not require free labor or people's input or whatever, whatever, whatever. Thought I'd put that one out there. Jay, I'm not letting you off the hook. This was meant to be a difficult question and you've turned it into a fantastic mesmerizing show of how unhumanly human you are. But... We need to know about the second part of that question. What were the motivations after the big hit of being banned and everything that has happened? How did you come back full strength and then started updating the wiki, going back full-fledged, started streaming? Where is that all coming from? 
Well, I, I touched on this a while ago, but there, that was a multiple part question, so I'll, I'll get to each. Uh, the mm -hmm. reason, well, starting at the beginning, after I was unbanned, um, I was unsure whether I would keep playing, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a game that had, in some sense, done me dirty. Um, Quite I right. Was, I was pretty mad uh, for a very long time. Um, yeah. I made some, I was pretty rude at the end to the person who was communicating with me in the ticket. Uh, maybe not, I don't think inappropriately rude, I was brusque, or then uh, I didn't insult them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but I did, um, I did question whether it was smart to put any more time into this game that clearly uh, does not have the utmost respect for its players in every case. Mm. Um, but in the end, what got me was the sunk cost fallacy, right? I have tens <laughs> of thousands of hours in this game. Um, explain I've this, this to us, please. No, no, we're not all of... from finance or math background. Please explain the sunk cost fallacy. It's a brilliant thing for everyone to know about in life in general. Right. So the sunk cost fallacy is essentially throwing bad money after good, right? If you've spent a lot of time doing something, you feel like you want to keep doing it. Uh, that's a pretty poor explanation, but the fact that I've spent so much time in Adophis makes me want to continue, uh, finish the projects that I had started instead of just, because if I stop, that was all for nothing, right? Yes. I spent 20, 25,000 hours yeah. uh, playing this children's game for literally no reason. Uh, and then I just, <laughs> I wasted all that. Yeah, um, you crystallized I mean, that. Mm. Yeah. It really, it really drove it home. Um, I was starting to regret a lot of choices I had made mm. in my life, and I, I kind of still do. Um, it might be getting a little too first degree, but a question of whether it's healthy to spend this much time on a game uh, is open for sure. I don't know if there's a, a one answer that's correct for everybody, but all that's it's ha it happened, right? I I did spend all that time in the game, so I feel like I might as well try to get something out of it. Mm. Um, but in the end, I did. I was. I wanted to keep playing, right? I like the game. I like planning things. I like executing those plans. I like practicing things and then executing them on Shadow as well. I I just like the game. So when yeah. they let me back in, I I went back in. And I started playing again. So <laughs> that's, that was that was the decision I made. And as for streaming, mm. uh, like I said at the start, I was streaming 100 percent, literally all of my gameplay, so that there was something I could point to if I ever got banned again. I'd be like, no, look, it was legitimate. I was on stream yeah. the whole time. Mm. Um, after a couple of weeks, uh, I was getting even fewer viewers than I do now, like literally zero all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, not really, <laughs> I was debating how much I was actually worth it. And then when I got the answer back saying, no, you're, you're good, uh, you're unbanned, I uh, stopped streaming uh, all oh. the time. But I came back to it because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. I wanted to spread a little bit of some of the, the shadow knowledge <laughs> and fun to let other people participate in it maybe yeah. vicariously watch me die something that's already happened on stream yes um, i've seen it that. once and for the, <laughs> you have you were there for the, the one death on fury yes. um yeah that's that was rough but yeah, yeah. that's um that's yeah. that's why for the wiki stuff i don't know i feel like there's not Wiki was a big part of me playing Dofus back in the day. I would just browse the wiki and look at things I wasn't ready to fight yet and get some information, look at other builds and classes. And I enjoyed having a resource that was up to date and full of information. Mm -hmm. And I, I miss that, right? I feel like in the international community, we've always been kind of underdogs. Um, and so these days, especially in the past couple of years, there's a ton of good information, even in English. Yeah. You've got uh, Dofus DB and things like that, which is all which is all translated. And I mean, your Discord and everything like that. But I will say, and this is nothing against you personally, I don't like the Discord model. I don't like that all the information these days is just in some random private server. It's not even indexed, right? You can't search mm. for it. It's in the deep web, technically. And yeah. to me, that, that makes the game a little bit harder to learn about. You can't just mm. go to some place. If you're going to Google it, for instance, and you find a wiki and it's not up to date, uh, is there another source that you could go to? If you don't know yeah. about Dofus Pool the News, uh, then I think you're just kind of out of luck. Out of luck, yeah. So I... I want, I would like it to be a resource that's more useful for people. I have not always put as much effort as I could into that, uh, but it is a little bit tricky because as you, as you mentioned, completely uncompensated, uh, unless you do an interview with a famous guy like yourself, uh, nobody knows your name, so you're not doing it for any sort of posterity. And it takes, it takes a long time to get this information presented. And most people, this is not a slight, and again, against anyone personally, but most people, <laughs> if the wiki isn't updated, it isn't updated, yeah. like, oh, well, of course it's not, and it sucks. It's not up to date these days. But if it is, and they're, they're not like, oh, th thank goodness for the wiki, they just kind of expect it to be there as a resource. Of course. So it's, I don't know, the, the motivation for me is not always there. Um, some of the, I mean, there's some back uh, back end stuff with the formatting that makes it a little bit trickier to update. 
automatically, but th that's on me. Uh, that's related to some of the choices I've made with my update method, which is not ideal. Um, somebody else could probably do it better than I can. But in general, that's that's what it is, is I, I really like the wiki and the format of it. Um, well, maybe not the format these days, but the, the idea of a public resource that's easy to find that anybody can update and add their knowledge to, I think that's a great model. That's yeah. something that I really like. I, I'm sad that it's gotten to the state that it is. I hope to someday be able to say that I helped fix it. Fantastic. I'm well happy with that answer because it is poignant. And and it also highlights uh, something. I, we, we, so people might have seen me take note of uh, something while you were talking. You've highlighted the importance of indexing the Discord because so far, um, I still, and I'm going to be vulnerable here with everyone watching and listening and also in the future, I do suffer a lot from uh, imposter syndrome. I don't think I have a lot of value to give despite the Discord being the most active one with a lot of resources and things like that. I still see the shortcomings, what it could be, what other tools I could add to it, how much bigger and better it could become. So I'm not ready to talk loudly about it. But that is starting to change. Uh, we've talked about, about this with Jay before we started the live. Perfect is the enemy of good. And I think it's good enough if we made this more public for people to enjoy news right now than to wait for some sort of arbitrary future in which it becomes better than the wiki and Office Poly Noob combined. So I have taken note to do ads, little videos that I intend to make, but also at a minimum, a little Reddit post. A lot of people have found the Astrob Zap when they started it, just because it was on Reddit. When you Google it, yes, you will find the wiki, you will find Office Polino, but you will also find Reddit threads that talk of some sort of hidden gem that you can go into and find more information. So that was my takeaway. Thank you for that, Jay. That was impressive. And we've only got one last bit to go through, which is the fun stuff you will be pleased to know. <laughs> I think you've done all the heavy lifting. How do you feel now after all that effort, tedious effort? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't tedious. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I nice. didn't feel like you were an imposter at all for the record. Nice. Do you feel any lighter after getting your story out there and many of the people who rushed to comment against you on that public Reddit thread <laughs> being here yeah, now and noticing? Uh, <laughs> I will never <laughs> forget or forgive. Those names are <laughs> seared into my memory. Uh, but no, I'm not fine. It's fine. Uh, I'm starting to suspect you might be helped, American, Jay. <laughs> I've helped both of the people um, who were the biggest uh, drivers against me, I would say, with some back end and uh, bot stuff. So, well, not, not bot. Sorry. Uh, some game information stuff. <laughs> game information. Uh, so, I've, uh, you, I, you, I think you can tell there's no ill will there. Yes. But also, yeah, no, I hope that wasn't too me <laughs> complaining for three hours because I, I know that's probably not fun to listen to. No, 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 no. Heard of. It has been fantastic so far, and it's not even finished. I'm having a blast, and I hope it lasts longer. I did pick up on a question from Huge on the chat. It's a peculiar question, but I do have the answer to it, and I thank you for answering for asking that. His question is: How much XP would you get if you did the Almanax 365 days in a row? How much lap? How many levels? How much camas would you make? I've added the camera bit, but do you have some sort of vague answer to that, Jay, from your experience doing it on 6,700 accounts? <laughs> Well, it's a little bit tricky for me to tell because all my uh, Talkasha characters, for the most part, are 200. Because the I have my main accounts, which are you know all the characters are high level because I've been playing them for 15 years. Mm -hmm. My secondary accounts is the Volbus characters I made, so they're all 200 because you have to be that for the Volbus. Yeah. Um, so it's only on Shadow that I gain experience from the Almanax, and it's tricky to tell because of the times three and the mm -hmm. times six on some characters. I don't have a good answer uh, of what that would be. I mean, I could calculate it write a thing no need quick. for that someone has done the effort and i want to highlight this goat of a chap his name is goatesque he's moroccan french his name is joed and he has run the experiment for all of us to benefit from he's done the almanacs cool. on one character for 365 days in a row imagine the dedication and the level you get is about 170 odd and you make about 3.7 million karmas doing that this is the answer. Without multiple, yeah, just X1, 172, I think. But if, if I've missed any detail, this is the video. His name is Gotesque. Combien de karma? Experience. One year of almanacs uniquely starting from level one. I tell you everything. That's the title of his video. 
And it was popular to say the least because I've clicked it, if anything, just to get the answer to that. Knowing that it might come up in the future. <laughs> How much XP do you get? It's a good thought experiment, isn't it, Jay? So prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like would say that's uh, yeah. hmm, it's a little bit interesting because on Shadow, where I have triple experience, my characters that have done it for 300 days are around level 156. Oh, well, there might be more so to not, it then. Yeah. I don't really, I would have to do the math or maybe watch the video. I'm a little yeah. surprised we get 172 in time. Yeah. Well. That, might, that is a bit surprising if you say what you say, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I'm not saying he's wrong. I haven't yeah. really investigated it. That is, I'm always, this happens all the time where I, I will hear something like that and I go off and do the calculations yeah. or whatever and spend three hours doing that instead of <laughs> something useful on the wiki. Uh, so that's another one of my problems is I, I tend to get distracted by things that are interesting to me but not useful to anybody not else. That's exactly how cool stuff ends up being made. That's how Gluto will, will have a conversation and be like, what, what would happen if, how would we be able to do this? And that one question or sentence will lead to a bot in two hours. <laughs> and he'd be like, shit, I was meant to be doing Nidas or Farming Paragon or something. This day is finished already and I've not done anything but code. <laughs> yeah, but I see Ferg's question and you're right, it's not going to be a, a direct three times multiplier because since the level changes discreetly, right, at every level, or the XP changes discreetly at every level, there's going to be some situations where you get a higher level and then it's not exactly, you're not, yeah, it's not happening the same way. So, interesting. Nice, nice. Sure I'm loving it. Out. Yeah. Thank you for that one, Panzer. I, I've never used that wiki or played the game. But I imagine it must be so good and contain everything that you want and be so up to date and in immediately renewed when information is available that it is it has become the reference, hasn't it now? From what I can see from his comment. What I'm are yeah, <laughs> there's a question for you in chat now, before we'll say we move one on. feature. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Go on, go on. One feature. Real quick. One feature fandom is working on adding is maps. And so one of the things I wanted to do was make a map like Dofus TV has of all the resources in the game. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are some limitations that they need to address before it can be useful for Dofus because we have such a big map with so many resources um, and they're they're still working on that in the back end. But it is I have most of it ready on my end. Just need to have them create the map thing and then we could finally have a good map on the wiki because all the resource things are out of date and I have not been updating them because I'm waiting on these maps. So that's another thing is that kind of interacting with fandom wow. on some of these issues where they have their own work they're doing on the back end and uh sometimes that blocks some of the things i'm doing Oof, that is a big undertaking and if you don't mind me asking wouldn't that be directly jumping into the um uh, intellectual property slash uh, what we've discussed earlier the rights property rights to the map how would you avoid uh, by having an exact yeah. same okay. map with the resources and locations that sounds like a nightmare uh what do you mean or right, in with regards to on commas images or yeah, yeah 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 because, yeah, the you're right that having a full uh, resolution image of the map would be iffy. Um, the thing there is that Dofus is very unlikely to copyright strike us for something like that, even if right. it were to be a copyright violation. Mm. I think the fair use argument would work there. We're using, I mean, the only way to communicate what the game world looks like efficiently is using the map of the game world, right? And yeah. that's, <laughs> maybe we can, I, could, I could try to draw it myself in like MS Paint. Um, <laughs> that would not be particularly good. So uh, I'm fairly certain we could get away with that, uh, even if it did come to a court case, which again, it's very unlikely to. I mentioned all the copyright stuff. I probably went way too hard on that. We've just been dealing with that a little bit. We had an editor, which mm -hmm. um, I always appreciate new editors coming in, but their plan was to take Dovis Pulinub's stuff all the high level explanations and like translate it and paraphrase it onto our wiki and Nightmare. so we had a discussion about whether that would be allowed mm. um and my point of view was probably not and i think i kind of scared them off because they had ended up not really doing many yeah. updates but it is something we have to be cognizant of even i mean just oh, yeah. the optics right like oh the wiki all they do is just copy stuff from dofus pool and noobs and translate it uh, it's it just, doesn't it's matter if it's look, that right? i will happily take that what i don't want to see <laughs> is uh, i don't know if people are familiar with the supercell the company that makes clash of clans and clash royale they've recently sold the company or something has happened in that the developers who has made who have made the game initially have cashed in so to speak. This is a jargon in finance whereby you sell your shares or a portion of them and you realize the gain from all the work you've been building. So you build the company until it's massive and then you sell all of it or portion and then you take all the money and you still are at work. And they've changed their attitude towards content creators. They've come after them. There's a big scandal happening right now with Supercell whereby they're literally striking entire... Imagine you have a 
YouTube channel. That's your living. You make content and you've done so for 10 years without a problem. And you wake up the next morning and they copy strike, copyright strike your entire channel because you're using their music, their images and stuff like that. And they've changed their attitude. So there's something to be cognizant of. That's all to say it is not completely unfounded to worry about things like that, Jay, and have the conversation with the chap who just wants to translate. <laughs> Just like that, yeah. <laughs> As a wiki, we get a little bit more leeway because it's an educational thing, right? Well, not educational, quote unquote, but like informational. Yeah. Uh, so we're not we're not using it as part of just a video or whatever. But it is, you know, something I I, I don't, I'm sure a lot of people in the chat have seen the H bomber guy video about plagiarism. <laughs> so that's another thing to be a little bit careful of. Is there's a, there's a heightened awareness around plagiarism, and I think rightly so. Yes. Because it's it's not cool to take people's hard work. Like Dobus Perle noobs, they didn't just write down the names of the bosses they spent a lot of took a lot of work as somebody who tries doing wiki updates i can tell you oh, yeah, how yeah. much work it takes to write those guides and make those images and everything and yeah it's just move i'm allowed to say that on the stream to yeah. uh, take that with that permission yeah. um and yeah and if you're just gonna have exactly the same information as dobus poorly noobs then what's the point you can just go to that site and translate it in the, right. your chrome translator where's the whatever, value so. yes where's the value exactly create? if you're not adding yeah. value you're always going to be in, in trouble. Quite right. Thank you for that. Um, just a quick one with chat and UJ. Uh, we are approaching the last segment from the podcast whereby we take our guests and put them on the spot. We will ask them questions very rapidly and get to know what their preferences are, their appreciation of the game, aesthetics. And today, from what I know about Jay's, he's a big fan of reading books, sci-fi in particular and another genre. So what I've done is I've mixed the usual quick fire <laughs> round with a bit of, uh, what, 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 should, what should we call it? What sorts of, what is the closest thing to uh, what we're trying to do today in terms of uh, actual existing shows, Jay? What would you call uh, it? Is, who wants to be a millionaire? I who assume you'll be, be yeah. millions of comments. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire type questionnaire. So I will show? start a question and he will have a buzzer that he can use to stop when he knows the right answer. If he gets it wrong, I continue the, the, the question until the end of it. If he doesn't get it right, I'll give him a couple of hints and then we take it from there. And mixed with that are the usual questions you are used to that we will ask to get Jay's appreciation for the game, aesthetics, areas he likes, dislikes, dungeons, things like that. But do just before we do that, those, or that open, sorry, open season. Do I have to buzz in for those questions? No, as well, or is it... <laughs> no, no. Those ones are quick fire. You hit whenever you, because those are particular to you. There's no right answer for those. Right. Yeah. Is Although there is one question. There is one question that has a definite right answer, which is the coolest looking hat and cape. It's Inky Vale and Solomonk. I will not accept any answer than that. <laughs> jokes, 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 Boy, jokes. We're going to get into it, aren't we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> but just before that, uh, I wanted to end this uh, segment right here and take a five minute break with a question to you, Jay. And your experience, your encyclopedic experience of the Almanacs as we've established, and your unhuman human approach to this whole venture doing 120 dolmen axes at once has to be high up there i think the only person i know who does anything remotely close to you what you're doing is grifox he's a french streamer who does things I'm like that in big Sky. yes team panagrif yes is that where the the inspiration came from <laughs> uh i mean he stopped doing that so i don't know if that really counts <laughs> yeah. um, you take but no lead. i was i mean I was doing it before him, not to brag. Uh, but I was a yeah, flex. I, just, I, needed, <laughs> I needed commas on shadow. And then at some point I decided, since I'm already doing this, I might as well go for the Dolman Axe on top of that. So I, I'm a, I am familiar with his content. I have watched him do his stuff, um, but I'm not I'm not doing any sort of class-based thing like he is. Uh, yeah. It's mostly just for, I'm doing, I'm in it for the money. Fair enough. That's fabulous. You're going for the big bucks. So the question I wanted to ask you for the benefit of everyone that is watching right here, you do the almanacs regularly, and you also do, from having crashed many of your streams, I've watched hours of your stream to try and come up with interesting questions, and I hope I have succeeded to some extent. What would you say are the biggest repeatable quests to do for karmas? What are your top two? Top two quests That's to do. One. Uh, well, my top two are going to be the only two that I do, which is the almanacs every day, and then shoe polish once a week. Let's go! Guys, you've heard it here. The top two best repeatable quests to do in-game. If you don't want to break your head so, and do 30 a day, shoe polish and uh, That's for me. So I go for low effort um, and speed. 
So those, those two, right, they're pretty quick. They don't require a lot of resources, uh, very fast, not a lot of maps to traverse. Polish. One thing I will say, this annoys me, this is very personal. If you don't do a ton of quests every day on all your characters, you might not know this. But there is a limit to how many times you can do the same quest across multiple characters on the same account. Um, so what? it's like three. So if what? I do, when I, it comes times for Tuesday and I start doing shoe polish, I can do it on three characters, or on three teams, I guess, on Talkasha. Uh -huh. With a shadow, do it on three teams as well, and then I'm done. That's it. I gotta what? wait 24-ish <laughs> hours and do it again. Um, and for shoe polish, I currently have, let me get my, my document where I write this down, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I have 13 teams that I do shoe polish on, so it usually takes me until like Saturday or Sunday before I can even get those done because of that cooldown. <laughs> so um, that's kind of annoying. Uh, not related to the question, I apologize, but I think uh, Golden Spirit has a video on some, uh, totally forgiven him, by the way, not mad at uh, he has a video about <laughs> some of the, the daily quests You're that might be sport. more useful to a solo encounter, <laughs> because I... There's uh, some of that you can do in Sophokia, right? You fight those mobs, mm. the, the toolkits from the crabs, I think, and something else, the bottles. I don't do those personally because they don't scale. Uh, I would have to do multiple fights and wait for harvestables that have a respawn time on a ton of different characters. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's not worth it. Um, Fair enough. So the, the answer might be different for other players who don't play as many characters and accounts as I do. And uh, you can find a lot that's better that sense. Also, the carob hair quest could be worth yes. it, depending on what server you're on, how valuable they are. I do that occasionally because I have to get hairs for shoe polish, Yeah, uh, but I certainly don't do it every single day. And one other oh, thing yeah. I'll mention is mm -hmm. upcoming in, in Natsufokia in Volcania, there is a weekly quest. It has some prerequisites, but I believe you get 200,000 commas per character per week. So what? that is definitely something to investigate. I'll tell you what, I will definitely remember it because I've had copious amounts of uh, whiskey so far in this evening. But will you please do me the big favor of whenever that approaches or it starts happening, can you make a post about it or like an event on the Discord, please? Because I'm sure a lot of people would benefit from that, given the number of people who do repeatable quests. Uh, yeah, the problem is that it, it does require you have to do a bunch of quests, you have to do some fights, there's one harvestable thing. But once you do that once... You That's can do it. it every single week as long Got as Volcania. Or just a reminder. Course, I'll happily do it myself or have someone uh, put it in place. But just remind us whenever this happens because I i don't know what Volcania is, to be honest. <laughs> I've stepped foot <laughs> in it once. <laughs> right. Uh, well, you should. I'll be doing some of that content on Shadow. I plan to do it on a couple of teams because it's free commas. And uh, Volcania on Shadow, it's a, it's a whole other thing. We, we, mm. I don't think we have the time to get into that. <laughs> I'm sure myself and a lot of people are looking forward to that madness, that brilliant, convoluted madness that ends up with a lot of cameras in the other end. Right, we're going to call it here for five minutes and we shall return back with the last two segments, I would like to say. The quick fire round with it mixed a little sort of who wants to be a millionaire game. And the last bit, which is where Jay will have the floor all to himself, tell us about his last words promote his work, get us excited about something that is happening in the future, and especially tell us how we can support him, really, in simple terms. Is that all okay with everyone? All good, Jay? Should that we call it? Yeah. Uh, simple terms is all I can do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Five minutes uh, break. Real quick. Yeah, sure. If you don't mind. I saw mm -hmm. in the chat somebody asked what my plans were for Unity. Yeah. Um, I will be shadow for a couple months when unity comes out because of the potential for bugs and i will be doing an adventure on the new servers like so many other people uh, but i have no firm plans so that's that mono multi uh maybe a mix of both sweet yep so there will be a lot of unity gameplay but with the optic of uncovering the bugs and highlighting them to the dev team so they can sort <laughs> them out before the release yeah, there's so it's many variables there. that can change between now and the launch of Unity that are, that are going to affect what ends up happening. So I'm, I'm not, nothing's nailed down, but definitely taking a big break from Shadow because on Shadow, if you die because of a bug, that's it. You don't get your stuff back. <laughs> that would be interesting, Gluto. Dying on Unity. <laughs> right. I'm a one month minimum and maybe longer <laughs> depending on the launch goes. My, my break time from Shadow. Shadow QI testing, next level. Yep, that's what he does and that's what he will be doing. <laughs> right jokes aside are you ready for the last bit which is i call it the quick fire round because it is quick i will fire at you some questions and the whole idea of it is to take you out of your comfort zone just a little bit and get you 
spill in your mind very quickly. So what f comes to mind first is what we want to hear. We don't want you thinking about things and putting it in your best words and then making up an answer after some time. Is that, are you okay with the parameters? Yeah, as long as you um, edit the video. So it looks like I got them all correct. But... <laughs> okay, deal. No, not thinking uh, is one of my specialties. It's fine, it's fine. It's, it, it's a bit of fun. It's not designed to catch you off guard or anything like that. Are you okay to just give us a quick um, buzz just to see that it works on the soundboard? Um, kind of... <laughs> That's it, perfect. Can you just give us a quick confirmation chat that you've heard that little buzz sound? Or it, it's fine, it's, it's for me to hear so I can stop uh, giving you the hints and everything like that. I will oh, leave this up to loud, you. super loud, really. Uh, get everyone's attention. Oh, was it, was it too loud? I want it to be louder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep at that volume, though. Wake it up might the be sleepers. <laughs> right, nobody's sleeping in this section in particular because it usually is the most fun. And I will send the invitation again to chat. Please do contribute. If you hear a question you find interesting, let me know what you think about it. What is your favorite of this or your least favorite of that? Don't hesitate to participate. It's designed to be interactive with chat, not just the guests that we have on today. I wanted to give you an option, Jay, just to make this more customized for you as an experience. Would you like us to separate the quick fire, the traditional, and then do the sci-fi book one, the who wants to be a millionaire type question, or mix them both? Random. Uh, I'm actually fine with <laughs> mixing. Now, this might this might actually surprise you, but <laughs> there we go. You're ready, <laughs> right? First question I'd like to start with is, you have walked and wandered into the Ankama headquarters. You have tripped, accidentally pressed a button that deletes a dungeon in the game. Which one are you deleting? I'm going to take uh, Crocobulia. What? <laughs> what? I'm, assuming, I'm assuming this is retroactive. I mean, deleting one dungeon right now as, as we speak. Completely eradicate oh, it. The future, not retroactively. Just one, just one now, from the past and everything. Yeah, I mean, you, you've overthought much. it. Um, oh my god, you've overthought it. Uga. <laughs> Uga, oh right. Boy. Do you want to tell us why that, that popped into your mind? So, I'm a little bit afraid of Uga, actually, because once I was soling it for all my ochres on Shadow, and I was splitting into two teams of four. One of my teams, I messed up, I made a mistake, and I, uh, what is it, reconstituted him. I fully healed him, <gasps> or sorry, Uga is female, I believe. I fully healed her three times, and I almost uh -huh. died. So since then, I've just bought the souls, and they're about a million commas a piece. So if I can get rid of one dungeon, it would be that one. Save me yeah. some money. Holy shit! Bad memories, terrible memories. What I said character? Really originally, because uh, sorry. Are you gone? What is it? I was gonna say that's the first dungeon I team wiped in. So if that were gone. I might have kept playing in 2020 and be a lot more advanced by now, but mm. if it's not retroactive, then you have my answer. I'm seeing the answers are quite tied to the fact of there being some bad memories with them in uh, in Shadow. I hold my worst memories the dearest. <laughs> 1953, a dystopian book, novel, written by an American writer, Ray Bradbury. It presents a future American society where books have been outlawed by fire and... <laughs> Is the question just what the title is? <laughs> what is the book? Okay, Fahrenheit 4, Fahrenheit Let's go! <laughs> We've got a soundboard for that one. <laughs> Hold on, I've also got another one. Temperature at which paper burns. Uh, not accurate, I believe. <laughs> Shadow number one. Hello, Lost. Welcome to the welcome to the stream. There's noobs, one of my uh, most loyal viewers. Yes, I. Yep. There's, yep, yep, I do recognize him from your chat. Yep, welcome. If you've missed um, the previous conversation, I will put everything up on the YouTubes later on for you to watch if you've you missed You can just it. say it all again now if you want, right? <laughs> let's go. Right, let's introduce Either, okay. <laughs> Right, tomorrow you start a new adventure on a mono account server and you have to pick one character only. Which one is it? Up. I up. Well, yup. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. Yep. Good damage dealer, reliable, and everything. Yep. I'm a Yup main, always have been, always will be. 
I know you've told us when you started playing and you're quite an old timer in present terms for everyone that plays right now you definitely are an old timer what is one mechanic or spell that you missed from the past that you wish would be brought back uh, swapping with sacrifice that was one of my favorite eras in the game where you had just a team of eight characters you were jumping around across the whole map with leak pie and then hitting with uh, weapons the weapons i'm not sold on but i really enjoyed just what you got that is amazing i'm seeing i'm seeing lost has a really interesting mechanic the osas revive once a, an ally died he could bring him back to life which was incredible that means death was not Although permanent <laughs> I was not a fan of how it interacted with the sharing challenge because the, the new player was considered a summon of the Osa, so you could fail sharing if that oh. character hadn't killed yet. Still, I'm not the sure mechanic if itself. Ever that or ever fixed that, but it was it was very cool, very unique for sure. Nice, nice, uh, nice. Kind nice. of unbalanced, but I definitely used it a lot in my adventures because I had an Osa for the buffs, and one of the useful tools was the revive. Mm. Osa's Bork Magus, his chants are in great. <laughs> <laughs> With the cry emoji as well. <laughs> Rip Panzer. Our thoughts, our best thoughts are with you. Right. Uh, how did George Orwell come up with the name of his famous dystopian novel, 1984? I believe nobody knows, but there is a theory that since he wrote it in 1948, uh, he Let's just swapped the number. Let's go! I think if you uh, look into it, you will find that people are not sold on an explanation. They're like... It's a little simplistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that as a correct answer still. <laughs> that is incredibly astute. Uh, here's a piece of trivia. He actually wrote it in June 1949, but because it's the simplest and closest explanation that people could surmise, they just attribute it to it being like the thinking and writing of it must have preceded the release. You don't need to be a math major to, to know that. <laughs> so that's, that's As correct. Well, I can confirm that 84 is <laughs> Let's go. It strikes again. Cool, 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 cool. You're a big prolific quester just by the sheer amount of characters you have and content that you go through. You know some of them intimately. A lot of them I'd like even to say. What is the hardest quest fight that you've encountered so far? I mean, on shadow or non shadow? Sorry to clarify all things the question. On all shadow. things confounded. The hardest quest you've encountered so far. Um, the guy, the guy with the horns, B Bulak. Mm. Someone was talking about it just recently. I think it was uh, Safio, the other S. That is not me. The cool guy who boosted the server, a cool eight times, just so we can have a cool experience for one people join. Shout out to you, S. If you're watching, and if you watch this in the future. Yeah, that is an incredible. What, what makes it difficult? Just a lot of classes, when I was doing it, uh, did not exactly have good tools to deal with it, right? And you didn't have, was that was before the rework, was missing a lot of mobility. Any class that did not have that kind of mobility was going to be in trouble. Mm. So I, I, I struggled for a while, and that's why I started building my collection of incarnations. <laughs> because nice. I needed them for those hard quests, and I was not, uh, I was not up to it. I think I, I passed it with the uh, Schaefer incarnation on maybe four characters, the ones that were tough. Oh, man. Wow. Uh, I mean, dude, you joke, but I have I have died <laughs> to that on uh, Shadow. <laughs> Oof, painful memories. F in the chat and for again, Jay. <laughs> uh, the the Sedita from the Squirrels, the classic 1.29 quest uh, right above Astro. Uh -huh. Is that also in your list, would you say? No, I just, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the answer I, that I, I get I'm mostly is... Uh... Never happened. Go on, go on, sorry, I missed that. I was just saying that I'm, I'm happy to live in the 2.0 era and not have to worry about... <laughs> about that Astro. quest. <laughs> Old Astro, although some of the new quests uh, give it a run for their money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a lot of people tend to go with, uh, what is it called, Slobberpus, just because it's a completely tedious with hard mobs. And thankfully, we can control the summon now, but it still doesn't make it any easier. Indoor, Definitely. Right. So that's where I'm kind of at a disadvantage, because I haven't done that yet. And I haven't done any Eliocalypse content. So any of the hard yeah. stuff, Pandela 3, 4, 5, kind of limited. You've got all of that to look forward to. One class you yeah. can delete right now forever in the game. Which one is it? Sacrier. <gasps> what? <laughs> that needs explanation. Your answers so far have been throwing me off. What? <laughs> Why? What? How come? I feel like it's, it's, it's always been so difficult for them to balance it. It was the only class, I think, well, maybe not the only class. I think Osa had some stuff. But back in the day, it was one of the only classes 
one of the only classes ever. Can I finish my sentence? Uh, one of the only classes ever that has had different <laughs> functionality in PvP and PvM because of how difficult it was for them to balance it. The punishments mm. gave half as much stats in PvP as they did in PvM. Otherwise, it would be overpowered. So one of the few instances that they did split things up like that, and uh, even like nowadays, Sacrier, uh, I changed mine into an... I used to run it for the sacrifice strategy that I mentioned earlier, swapping yes. Bleak Pie. Yeah, and they yeah. nerfed that, and they nerfed all the fracrifice stuff that was Fraction and Sacrifice. And... Ah. Sacred became so bad that I changed mine to an Echo Flip because it was Oof. just more useful. I was I remember exactly the quest fight I was doing. It's one of the don't drink the water fights. You're with uh -huh. Bucky, and then you're fighting some of the Steam Crab area mobs. I couldn't win with a Sacrier. I felt like a lot of the tools that you used to have were not there anymore after one of the reworks. Mm. Just, I got mad and class changed to a, an Echo Flip, which I still have today, although I might not given the recent update that I'm not a huge Oof. fan of. Yeah, Good and then grief. now... So many, like the Sacrier Panda strat for King Nidus, the Sacrier Elio strat currently for all the leeching. It's just so many abuses all the time. I feel like it's, it's a tough mm. class for them to get right. I would just take it out. Plus, I'm not a fan of the lore, the design, the wiki. <laughs> they, they have no idea what the name is based on. They're like, maybe it's Sacrifice. and Yeah, Rear, that's true. That's Rear. true. It's just, <laughs> no, too much. They don't have an identity. And if you remember, I've said that to Papino because he mains a Sacri. He started as a Sacri. And I've told him, you're one of three people generally that I know that play the class. It lacks an identity and it needs a complete revamp. And if my memory is right, man, I also shared that opinion as well. She said that it's one of the classes that definitely is lacking in terms of identity. He's not a hater lost. He has strong feelings about things. <laughs> I mean, I, I can when I need to. Next one. 1943 book that follows the story of a young person who visits planets, including Earth, and addresses themes of loneliness, friendship, love. Le Petit Prince? Yes, let's go! Uh, unfortunately, I've never read that one. Uh, I would like to. I probably should. But I am aware of some of the themes it deals with. Uh, the, you draw the sheep, right? I know some of the classics, but nice. I'm not, not deeply familiar. That was just a little hint to the French connection we've established earlier, because it was by... By? Can you tell us uh, the author? Oh, starts with a U, an A? Oh, yes, Antoine. Augustin Aurélien, Antoine du Dexupri? That's the one, Saint-Exupéry, yes, that is the one. It is a well, classic. the first name, because I didn't yeah. have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a classic, it's one that pretty much everyone has to read at some point in Morocco, and it's a fabulous story overall. I didn't Super. go to French school, unfortunately. So. Ah, that's, that explains it. Next question. The boss mechanic that you think is just perfect, it needs no changes whatsoever, the work of genius. Celestial Barbarian, right? Ooh, Fragos too. Boof the Royal. <laughs> Stop that, Panzer. What makes you say uh, Celestial Barbarians out of all the dungeons you've done? Nice, curious. Oh, as you may be familiar with uh, the things I've said, for yeah. the Frigos 2 area, the Team of Eight, the Sacrifice thing, that was my my favorite era of Dofus, yeah. other than the current one, which I'm a big fan of in general. And so I really liked, part of it isn't the boss mechanic itself, but kind of the aura around it, because that was before there was all the data mining and guides and everything. For yeah. a, long, a long time, nobody knew how to beat the Celestial Barbarian. I mean, it wasn't a long time, but for a yeah. while, nobody knew. And then... Yeah. People, some people find that found out and they didn't share it because there was a lot of money to be made by not sharing yeah. it. So it was kind of mythical finally getting there and seeing wow. that and then just putting it into place. There's a, they, for us, obviously, the first time that they did complicated mechanics. So you had all yes. those things. If you dodge fail, you die. Uh, any pushback damage, you die. And the boss does pushback damage and the Assyrian does pushback damage. If you any reduction um, every other turn, their heavy MP reduction or movement is going to cause it to re bring in all its allies or whatever. Uh. It's, I mean, that that's it was cool to me. Um, a lot of the new boss mechanics, I feel like it's too much. <laughs> They're really mm. going overboard. Like Eternal Conflict, it's got sixteen different things. Servitude, I feel like yeah. that was the correct amount in my opinion. It's not okay. super easy like everything on Retro that you don't even need to think about it. But it's mm. not today's. I mean, Corruption has five different mechanics and half of them are still bugged. Oh, right? <laughs> <All> shots fired. <laughs> right, next question. A boss mechanic that you think the devil wishes they would have come up with. It's horrible, poorly worked out, and just flat out right should be deleted. 
So actually, I'm a little bit biased here because I read the chat, but I do agree with noobs that the old Kanagrula Vol mechanic with the uh, summons and standing next to uh, the placement and everything, that, I I hated that. I remember doing a duo on, on the, that with my uh, Yop and Panda, and it took like 16 tries. I was doing it right before getting to class. I, I hated it. Um, that was before you could control summons, of course. Uh -huh. So at least I think I don't want to sound like a fool. Um, it might not have been before, I don't want to say in, incorrect information. I don't remember if it was before controlling summons, but it was very tedious. I didn't like that. Nice. Clear, concise answer. What do you think is the best looking area, Jay? And try not to piss off all of chat with this one, because there is one right answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I love the Pandala 3 area, the Wukan and Wukong. Okay. So you've got the right answer. <laughs> that is the single also best. That's the one that comes up most for people. All of Frigost is mm. uh, very, it's, it's up there, I would say. Some of it hasn't aged super well, and I'm a little bit biased. The areas are so big, mm. uh, kind of unnecessarily, especially the ice fields yeah. and the, um, the Lost Pines Forest, not Lost Pines Forest, um, Lost Pine Trails, I think. Mm hmm um, Lost Pines, yeah, okay, it's a different thing. Uh, it, that kind of takes away from it, in my opinion. But visually, I love Fergost, and the new Pandala stuff, especially Wukong and Wukong, looks great. Nice. Terrific. Uh, let's do one last of your uh, books and uh, hobby for reading. One last, and then I'll hit you up with a couple more from the normal Dofus team, and then we can move on to the last bit. I hope you're holding up very tight. Chat is saying we should take it easy on you. <laughs> Are you still okay with it? <laughs> I got my finger on the buzzer. Oh, let's go. He's excited. Right. So, a novel by a British author, Neil Gaiman, who, as a side thing, uh, is an acquaintance of my mother-in-law. She corresponds with him during holidays and things like that. The novel is a blend of Americana, fantasy, and various strains, strands of ancient and modern mythology, all centering... On oh. This is going to have to be American Gods. Let's go! <laughs> this guy is terrific. It's Neil Gaiman, <laughs> written a lot of books. Uh, I was waiting for information to narrow that down. Oh, that is terrific. That was spectacular. Because usually what gives away which one it is, is what it is based on and the year and things like that. And I tried to remove all of those and keep them vague, but you still smash that out of the park. I mean, it has American, American in the name. Uh, for my <laughs> own national pride, I had to get yes. that one. I've had to design them so they, that they touch your American side, a bit of French, and while keeping it a bit generalistic and not too obtuse. Thank you for that. Excellent. I don't need... Do you see? Well, the good thing is I don't need to do any editing because you've smashed all of them. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. Right, you've mentioned the best era. What is the most memorable thing that you've said earlier about the best era? And I'm thinking of something in particular. Most memorable thing was the uh, the weapons, right? It's the biggest difference to me between the game currently and the game back then is mm -hmm. the prevalence of weapons these days. I mean, I haven't used a weapon in years because mm. um, I'm once before you get to two hundred, the choice of weapons is just so limited. In PVM, it's fairly, good, it's rarely as good. But uh, to me, that's what it was: is moving around with sacrifice and then smashing with weapons and using it seven times, as many times as AP allowed. <laughs> exactly. Well, no. daggers are suboptimal because you want to look for AOEs in PVM, uh, but that's yes. just my opinion. Yeah, that is terrific. That That is clearly thought out from someone who does content in big teams. So you privilege speed and AOE and things of that nature. Nice. Uh, you've told us about the spell or mechanic that you miss from most uh, from the past. What is the spell or mechanic, general mechanic, it could be something meta, that you think should be removed right now? Something that is excessive, doesn't need to be in the game at all. My complaint a couple weeks or a couple months ago would have been the Sedita's double infection, uh, but that is gone. So mm -hmm. current mechanic, um, blow, d dealing damage. I wish they would take that out. Blow. blow, yeah, I see, the eye of one. Um, Gluto is saying the pick up and throw from the panda because it's nothing, there's nothing like it in the game, is there? Yeah, I think that's good yeah. that Panda has its uh, unique mechanic. Of course, nice. I'm just saying that because I play a Panda in all my teams and the placement is great. <laughs> yeah. Without it, it would make all the dungeons a lot harder and that's not something <laughs> I'm really looking for on Shadow. Yeah. Uh, we have asked you about the best looking area and we've got your answer. You must have thought about this. What area do you think should be at the top of the list in terms of complete revamp and redesign, bringing back to life? Uh, a lot of Automai Island. There's just... Nothing there in terms of content. Mm. Visually, I think a lot of it looks very good. Some of it's a little bit samey, but if they were going to revamp an area and give it 
quests and things like that, it would be Atomai for sure. Atomai. Fabulous. Very old area. Needs some love. You've heard it here, Ankama. Speaking of Ankama, the last question I want to end on is... Tomorrow, I'm having another podcast with all of Ankama. We're speaking. We have questions to ask them. What is the most pressing and urgent question you'd like to see posed to them? Number one in your list. Oh, why'd you ban me, you scumbags? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the next one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, I'd be curious about Unity, right? I, I'm. It's been so long, and there's been so little information, relatively speaking, compared to what we could have. Mm. I would like to know. Um, I, I can't really put anything above that. Um, yeah, that's it. I want to know More about Unity. More info on Unity. Mm. Other than that, if I had, you know, Unity is a little bit basic. Um, why? Why don't you just pay a moderator? What is the what is the reasoning behind that? <laughs> mm. It seems like such an easy win, um, though obviously economically it has its downsides, like a salary. But uh, what what are you what are you actually doing? What, what's going on behind the scenes? <laughs> that would be my question. I've always wondered. Yeah. I've interacted with it vaguely. Um, I know some things about it, and some of those questions, some of those decisions, I find questionable. So perhaps now is the yeah. time for you to tell us about the anecdote, or rather, story of you speaking with the moderator. If that's in the topic of the swing of things. Uh, sure. So I, I think I mentioned this vaguely, probably in a confusing way. Mm -hmm. But a couple of years ago, I was a bit, I was doing treasure hunts. Or I don't remember why. Sometimes I do treasure hunts when I have nothing else to do. Um, and I see a ton of bots, obviously. So that's why I report. I used to report them. And I noticed that what was happening was that this certain alliance had the prism in this area. They were recycling hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of roses of the sands to create nuggets in that prism then they were attacking it with uh, another character and then getting the nuggets from the zone with their bots so they were generating hundreds of thousands half a million nuggets per week in this way and that's a ton of commas right yeah. so i tried to report it to billions i made forum posts i made a twitter account i uh, added them i tried to private message them but they don't accept it i kept doing no. this over and over i tried to interfere with the botters i would jump in on their uh, combats try to uh, make it so they couldn't win the area but since they were bot botting they could multi-account and uh, i couldn't so they did beat me although i did uh kill a craw one of the so one of there was a guy like a real guy i'm um, playing along with the bots he said that he was getting paid to help manage them and he did uh he was kind of angry at me interfering with the bots and then he attacked me once but i did 1v1 him in my pvm set uh he was a craw and i was a yaw so i was pretty proud of that um, though I can't imagine he was anywhere near the even middle tier of PvP skill, given wow. his uh, activities. But yeah, so all that, and I was getting pretty annoyed when eventually I was contacted in-game by a moderator, whose name I forget, and I thought it was a very cool experience. Uh, it, starts, wow. it started with a J, didn't it? No, this is on Echo, this was Echo back in the day. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And so we, we talked, and he asked me, you know, what, what's going on? You've been uh, adding us like crazy on Twitter. What's, what's your deal? And so I explained to him that they were generating Roses of the Sands with treasure hunt bots, recycling them as nuggets, and then getting those nuggets and uh, getting them from the area after a fake AVA. And he, yeah. he didn't know about that. He was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Um, so I was a little bit surprised. Because uh, as I mentioned oh. earlier, you know, the moderators, moderators are volunteers, so they don't have time to keep up with all the latest stuff. I see. Uh, they're, I, they're also probably not super hardcore players, because I can't imagine those would make pretty um, all that good moderators. So they don't know all the aspects of the game, probably. Mm. Even I was not really thinking of recycling roses, but I have assumed it was possible. But I did. I explained to him what was going on. He said, okay, well, we'll look into it. And he told me a couple things. One of them was that apparently there's no automatic banning in the game. So they do not ban somebody for being a bot unless a moderator sees them perform an action and confirms they're a bot. Oh, so that uh, explains why the moderation is so minimal, right? Because mm. a lot of the bots, um, I saw this. Uh, I don't remember if you remember this <laughs> phrasing. Um, one of, I think one of the big French streamers, it might have been Hughes or somebody like him, he posted on a screenshot on Twitter of one of the bot discords, and it was the person selling the bot software or licensing the bot software. They had to stop selling new licenses for treasure hunt bots because there were too many. And it was, uh, it was not, <laughs> they weren't uh, able to make money or they were overgenerating the resources. So he, there's so he many of them the... competing with each other. Yeah, exactly, because they weren't getting banned. Uh, there were just so many piling up, and so he stopped selling it what? Um, for a while. And that, that screenshot made the rounds. And uh, all the all the bots these days, they can detect moderators, right? So if, they see a, if they're running around, they see a moderator anywhere, they'll like notify the other bots and then just stop Switch running. Off. And then the moderator wow. doesn't see them, and then they'll get banned. 
Um, wow. So that is kind of, I mean, it's probably for the, as somebody who was in, unjustly banned, I appreciate them not having automatic banning that could lead to false positives. Although clearly the system as it exists is not perfect. Um, mm. But with the limited number of moderators they have and the volunteer nature of them, they probably each only get maybe, maybe a couple hours a week in game. And there's only so many things they can check. And if the bots are smart enough, uh, the people running the bots would probably just not play. But probably like if it's, I don't know, 2 p.m. in uh, France, you assume a moderator might be around. If it's 4 a.m., probably not. Nope. So yeah. they run their, their bots at night or at opposite times. based on the server. Wow, so clever. Yeah, so it's uh, a lot of that is, we, we, I mean, I didn't, you know, rake him over the coals. I just kind of listened. I was appreciative that somebody reached out to me. Yeah. Because I think it was a big abuse. Uh, there's been, I mean, for years, all the nugget stuff. There was that thing with the Coolidge dungeon. Uh, that was a huge one. I think Easy PK is the big French alliance that have been accused over and over of botting with that specifically. I'm not saying they did it. I've never been on a French server. I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah, that was... It was interesting to hear a little bit more about their moderation practices, and that's what Correctly. made me not. That's what made me stop uh, reporting bots. I think, mm. for the most part. There's Although no I, I go back and forth on whether it's worth it, but yeah, exactly. A moderator, like a treasure hunt yeah. bot, if my report isn't useful to them, because they're uh, they can't ban it based on my say so. I just give them a name. If they have to be in game, what am I even doing? They just go to the the the, the treasure chest when the bots are in full force. And back in the day, you would see forty of them a second. Um, so. Be sitting wow. there and getting the names of a hundred bots a day it doesn't do anything it just wastes no, my time yeah absolutely waste the time yeah yeah good on you for realizing that and thank you for sharing that remarkable out out of norm experience of being contacted by a moderator in game and and them actually asking you what is going on explain to me <laughs> yeah i thought that was cool i mean it's it's better than just uh, ignoring me and uh, assuming i was making things up so i do appreciate that <laughs> yeah. it was a fairly positive interaction i lost yeah. the screenshots um yeah i deleted everything sadly it's cool but we don't have to bring the receipts thank you very so, ever so much <laughs> for the uh for, for that sale i appreciate it sadly for everyone and myself we are reaching the end of this conversation i'd love it to last longer in fact i had budgeted about an hour and a half like i do for most conversation and unsurprisingly for anyone who stuck around the conversation was so rich surprising interesting intense that it has lasted nearly four hours and i can't thank you enough for being such an interesting person jay i had my i had a hunch from crashing your streams repeatedly and seeing what you are on about while doing your thing, while playing, while being a streamer. I knew and I had to confirm that suspicion and I think it has been confirmed and amply. And my little thank you for being here and it's I don't take this for granted that if I contact someone they are necessarily going to say yes. My little thank you uh, for being here today and gracing us with nearly four hours of your time which is remarkable, thank you for that is I want to open the floor to you. Chat, if you have any questions, please put them through for Jay to pick them up if he wants to. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I don't know what else to say. I'm sort of overwhelmed by the length and how rich the conversation has been. And I'm going to really it again in the post editing when I start editing on the software to post it on YouTube as well. So it was lovely to meet you and I hope it won't be your last appearance on the podcast or with English um, content creators in general. I definitely want to see more collaboration across the board. Jay, the floor is yours. I want you to look in the camera directly as best as you can <laughs> and tell people what you have going on in your life, how they can find you online, uh, how to best support you especially. This is vital because we don't get the opportunity to do that because it feels like begging or boasting or bragging. I want you to unashamedly take the, the floor and tell us how we can best support you. The floor is yours. Thank okay. you very much for coming. No shame zone. So I don't have a lot of uh, content creation. I don't like the phrase, but it's accurate. Presences, I would say the main one is going to be Twitch, right? I have some plans to someday make videos, but it's easy to make plans. It's harder to make videos. So I will just mention the one thing is gonna be my Twitch. Uh, this is something you can do. It's very quick and it gives me a light, really helps me out. You just go to www.twitch.tv slash J underscore shadow. You scroll down, you see that button that says PayPal. You click it, you send me 10 or $12,000, whatever you can spare. It takes just a second. It really helps me out and uh, I, would, I would appreciate it. 
I love it. Not that's, holding that's really back. That's really the only thing I could think of. <laughs> I put the link to your Twitch for anyone who is curious about where the PayPal button is. It's down there on the link. While you're there, you can follow me. Uh, 5k, <laughs> honestly, don't bother. <laughs> it's, it's a thought that counts at that point. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for that belly laugh. Is there anything else you'd like me to share? Like your Twitter account? Or would you like some traffic in there or are you not? Don't bother much. Uh, no, the, the Twitter account is is very minimal. I don't I don't use it anymore. I just post some of my bragging screenshots to have a record. It's not always. <laughs> I kind of like scrolling down it to know when I did things. It's a yeah. little bit easier for me to have a timeline. Yeah. Otherwise, I got to go through all, every single one of my my folder has like sixteen thousand screenshots in it. So it's not a, it's not easy to find when things happen. So that's really all I use it for. I don't expect anybody to follow me there. <laughs> uh, Twitch is the big one. That's my. Uh, my goal becoming the number one content creator. Uh, follow me. Unfollow Malt. <laughs> You've heard it, guys. Here. I'm taking over. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's got ambitions. He's realizing them. And nobody's standing in the way. You've got the link down there on the chat. At a minimum, what my personal opinion is, just give him a follow. It helps any content creator reach that monetized threshold where it makes it more bearable doing a lot of free streams and things like that, putting in all the work. We've been able to uncover all the marvelous things he does in the background. And I think any contribution, help, button, follow, whatever you bring his way will keep him on the hook and keep him going on that rat wheel like that we are all on of doing free labor out of love. <laughs> yeah, dump him in here, dump him in here. Give him some of that. Thank you so much for being here, Jay. I appreciated the conversation. Thank you very much for coming again. And everyone for tuning in and listening to this unconventional format where there is no gameplay. <laughs> I would like to say catch you on the next sounds one. Sounds like my I've streams. Just, I've just spotted that there are a couple of questions. People are catching the last few seconds to put in questions for you, Jay. Do you want to catch any of those? Yeah, sure. Let me run through real quick. So best office is cloudy. I apologize, but that is just accurate. It looks the best. Uh, one of the just incredible damage boost, 20%. Absurd. And worst, Vol worst office is Volbus, because uh, I bought one for 450 million commas uh, three weeks before they announced it was becoming a quest drop. So that was my worst investment, if you want that callback. Uh, let's see what else. Long-term objective. Um, my goal is to finish six out of six on Shadow. That would be incredible for me. It's been done twice by people. I imagine it'll be completed again by other people before I even get to that stage. But if I could do that, I would be, I would love it. I would be very happy if I could prove to myself that I'm somebody who can get that done. But uh, it's, it's a long road and I'm still doing it. Nice. I mean, uh, I got secondhand pain from hearing your story about buying Volvis for 450 million. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy yeah, if, you, shit. if you wonder why I had to do things for commas back in the day, uh, that's why. <laughs> Um, I, yes, I do stream uh, most weekdays. I took the last week off, but usually every weekday, 6 to 8 p.m. my time, so like 2 a.m. everyone else's time. Um, if you go to my channel, you should be able to see that schedule. I'll just put it up on the screen to visually aid. Oop. Yep. So the link, I've posted it in there. Feel free to check him out. He's a cool guy, as you say, Panzer. <laughs> Definitely doesn't show the schedule, it. I guess, because I took I took a week off. I'll fix that up. Nice, nice. Thank you so much for being here. What I will do right now is I myself am feeling rather tired after four hours of intense conversation. I've had many a belly laugh. That was good English, wasn't it, Jay? <laughs> I've had that was many. Correct. Yeah, I've had. I've had a blast and thank you ever so much for coming. There's a lot of editing to be done afterwards. While I would love nothing more than to start another stream and carry on playing, I don't think I've got the energy to give you that kind of content. So we will say thank you and goodbye to Jay. If you do start your stream within the next three to five minutes, I will happily raid you. Otherwise, we will find some English content creator and show him some love in the meantime. Let me get things started on my end. I just want to say thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I know I'm not the biggest content creator or the most famous yet. Um, so I really appreciate you using your platform to shout out people like me who may not have that audience yet. So thank you for all that you do here and on the Discord. Anything to help. My pleasure. And there is no big content creator in the English world. <laughs> We're all tiny and small. <laughs> so yet, collaboration is the new Yeah. <laughs> We'll see what that what comes out of that. 